hello, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey everyone, it is Sunday. It is Warhammer. The camera's there. Warhammer Sunday. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Apologies, we didn't have a show last week. Uh, family stuff and bank holidays and all that took over, so I didn't get a chance to do a show. So welcome to this week. Uh, welcome one and all. As always, if you've never seen one of these before, uh, this is, oh, I'm out of breath. Ooh. I've been running around the garden for about 10 minutes doing bits and bobs. Hey, um, yes, if you've not seen one of these before, uh, this is Warhammer Sunday, where I do some work on my Warhammer army, the unending forces of the holy contrivance. And uh, I just have you hang out with me for three hours while I'm doing it. And hopefully we'll have a good time. I don't know how much work I'll get done. I'm continuing with the Chimera. I've got a bit of weathering to do, so we'll see how that goes. If I run out of things to do on this, because I'm at the stage now where the weathering might be a case of do something and wait for 20 minutes, I might have to start something else so you're not just sitting there watching me twiddling my thumbs. But welcome, welcome, welcome. As always, um, this is a show for you guys to hang out in the chat and have a good time. Hopefully you can uh, hear me and see me okay. I always like to check because I always fiddle with things before we go live and then I break something invariably. So hopefully... You can all hear me and see me. Okay, uh, like I say, if you've not watched one of these before, it's just a chance for you guys to hang out and chat, have a good time. I'll do some sticker giveaways later on. Uh, it's, uh, what, it's my show. It's nothing to do with the e-model show, this. So if you want to be a bit rude in the chat and use rude words, you can do. Don't worry about it. I'm not particularly fussed. I'm a grown-up. I don't mind. Uh, it might censor your comments a bit, but I've got the authorization button here, so don't worry too much. As always, uh, let's have a think now. Uh, yes. As whenever I take a week off, I always lose the plot and forget what I'm doing and forget how I do these openings. Uh, I'll be working on this. You guys will be hanging out in chat. If you want to ask me some questions, I depend on you to give me stuff to talk about. So for the love of dog, please do give me things to talk about. Pop your question in chat, stick it in big fat capital letters so I have a chance of actually seeing it. My iPad's over there this time, so yeah, put it in big fat capitals. If you want to, if you want to make sure that I do see your comment, uh, you can do a super chat, which is the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That will pop your chat in a little colour box and it will also make a little noise at my end so I can hear you and I get a little notification so I have a better chance. If you've not got access to chat at all, if you're watching this on your iPad or your iPhone or some other mobile device, you may be looking at the mobile version of the of the YouTubes. If you are, just change the desktop. Or if you're not on YouTube at all, click the little YouTube icon that's down in the bottom right down here somewhere. That will take to YouTube where you can join in the live chat. <clears throat> now, as always, we are watching. Uh, watching? No, we're not. We are carrying on with the stream boss battle you can see up here. Now, if you remember, it says I'm the stream boss, but I'm not. It's because I pressed some buttons and I broke it all. Our current stream boss is Simon Reynolds, or our Lord and Saviour Kevin, as we should know him. Uh, he's the current stream boss and he's got 98,000 health. He starts off with 100,000 and it's down to you guys to get his health down to zero. And whoever gets his health to zero wins a pot of money, basically, that will go towards Warhammer or Forge World kits. Uh, and it's usually anywhere between three to 500 quids worth of stuff. When Cy won, he won about just shy of 400 quids worth of Games Workshop kits. Was it 400 or 500? I can't remember. It might have been 500. I can't remember. Uh, Aviad was the previous stream boss and he won about 300 quid worth of stuff. So you're going to win some good swag. If you want to take his health down, the ways to do it. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, then please do. That will take a little tiny bit of uh, Kevin's health off. I'm going to call him Kevin from now on. That takes a little tiny bit of his health off. Uh, if you want to do a super chat, like I said before, the little dollar symbol below the chat, that will take a chunk of his health off. Or if you want to do a tip through the tip jar, which is down here, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru any tips through the tip jar will also take some of his health off and the bigger the tip or the bigger the contribution through uh, super chat the more health comes off so there you go so that's it so today we're going to be working on the chimera i'll have a quick look at the chat now i have to confess today it's tea today not coffee i know i know it's tea not coffee oh. i um i drank actually a lot of coffee this morning i made the terrible mistake of Drinking lots of coffee before the show. I can't drink more coffee, so I have to make tea instead. But to my credit, it has got like 300 sugars in it, so there we go. I shall have a quick look at the chat and see who is all in before we get going. Uh, now, Patrick was the first one in chat, sort of, today, because he was in about 10 o'clock this morning, 11 o'clock. However, Simon Reynolds was the first in chat, technically, because he turned up last week when I launched the chat and set it up like a week ago, two weeks ago. So, you're both king of the lab. Uh, now my chat only goes back so far, so I might miss out some of the some of you who were in at the start. Uh, we have uh, Snowman HFC is in. Welcome, Snowman. Quanoman is in. Welcome, dude. 
Uh, Dad is in, of course. Dad is at the moment one of your mods. Uh, Dad is a lovely chap. Don't mess with him. He'll kick your ass. Uh, Dad's in. Uh, Pascal here versus, as I said, he's in. Walter Wilmoth is in. Welcome, welcome, dude. Candy Graham for Mongo. Candy Graham for Mongo. Uh, Frankie Ghost Hobbywood is in. Welcome, dude. We have Gaz Vickers. Welcome, Gaz. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Mickle Pickle is in. Welcome, Mickle. It's been a few weeks. Uh, we have... Uh, who else have we got? Now, there is somebody who came in. My chat doesn't go back far enough. I'm seeing all the same people. Hang on. There's a conversation going backwards and forwards. William Rayborn is in. Welcome, William. Sprumonger says, Hello, all. First time here officially. Greetings from Melbourne. G'day, bro. I bet it's like... It's probably like what about 11 o'clock there? Almost ready for bed, yeah? Yeah. Had your dinner, your sangers or your snags. Now you're watching this nonsense, yeah. I apologise for the accent. That was terrible. That was not the best Australian accent attempt. It was the worst attempt an Aussie accent ever. Jeez. Uh, yeah, so welcome, uh, Spreemonger. Welcome. Hope you stick around. Uh, let's see who else we've got. Jamie Bone is in. Welcome, Jamie. Welcome, welcome, dude. Uh, we have Rascal's Hobby. Hello, everyone. Oh, he says, howdy, everyone. Welcome, Rascal. Uh, Cy Reynolds, of course. Our Lord and Saviour Kevin is in. Uh, who else do we have? We have Ghost Lyle says pineapple, 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 pineapple. I refute that theory thus. Uh, Wayne Haywood, hi all, says Wayne Haywood, welcome Wayne, uh, who else we got, uh, Juan Ferreira is in, hey Fox, when am I starting that Cesarbi? In about a week, Shh. in fact, breaking news, stay tuned next Saturday, there you go, there's a little hint for you, uh, did Fox just say he had, didn't have a shower last week, no, I what, I have a shower every day, uh, I, I, oh he didn't have a show last week, yes, I'm probably worried then, I'd be stinky if I didn't have a shower since last week. Ew! There'd be bits of me that didn't smell quite right. Uh, see, you hear your voice, see your hands just fine, says Walter. Thank you. Rinks Near is in. Hi, welcome, Rinks. Uh, Scott Sutherland is in from Orkney. From sunny, sunny, potentially sunny, mostly probably windy, so Orkney. Uh, Asazabi, when will we see that build that beauty, says Juan Ferreira again. Yes, Saturday. Shh, don't tell anyone. You might see something on Saturday. Shh. Uh, £490, says Cy Reynolds. Yes, that's how much he won on the stream boss battle. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Who is Patrick, says Pascal. I don't know. Who said Patrick? Where did Patrick come from? Uh, David Sanderson, hi, watching while playing Elite. Oh, David, I'd love to be playing Elite right now. Oh, I'll tell you what. Any of you out there who play Elite on Xbox? Uh... If you know Elite, there's the Elite Database, the EDDB or the EDSM, Elite Dangerous Star Map, where if you're on PC, you can link it up and it takes all your records and automatically imports them all. You can now do that for consoles as well, for Xbox and PlayStation. So when I play Elite now, it does like a, a, every minute it refreshes the, the database and it does like a, an update. It takes all your flying around data and all the stars you've discovered. So if you want to keep a record, hook it up. It's EDSM, Elite Dangerous Star Map, and it's got you register and you've got like a dashboard and it just does it every 30 seconds. So you can do that on console now. Um, bidi bidi oh, hello. There was a thing. What was that? Uh, Dad says Spong. Thank you very much, Dad. That's very kind of you. That's a little bit of uh, Kevin's health down there. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, what else have we got going on? Spoonmonger says Midnight. Oh, brew. So I like. hope you like staying up till three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jonathan is in. Cool. Hey, Jonathan. It says morning. I'm going to say Jonathan T because I never get your name right and I hate not getting people's names right. Jonathan T is in. Uh, who else have we got? Snowman. I haven't had a bath for 10 years, says Snowman. We know. We we, we can tell. <laughs> Spreemonger says, I'm from Yorkshire originally. Just keep an eye on the colonies. Oh, that means you're more northern than... Uh, more northern than most of us, then. Happen. Yeah, you're eight grand. Happen, say they. Therefore, I can't do an Australian accent now. I'll have to do a Yorkshire accent. Then you're one of those, then, aren't you, lad? One of us. Although, I'm Cheshire, not Yorkshire, but there you go. <sighs> right, so anyway, that's the chat. I hope I've not missed anybody out. If I have, I do apologise. Oh, Tyrone Key is in. Hello, he says. Tyrone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Tyrone Key also says Widge. Widge. Uh, okay, right, anyway, let's let's crack on. So today, we are going to be doing the weatherings. 
We've already done lots of chipping and things like that. I need to start doing dust and dirt. <coughs> and today's going to get a bit messy. I want to do... Well, I want to do some... I will be doing some dry brushing uh, for the earthy tones. But I also want to do some washes. Now, I haven't varnished this. It's not been varnished. There's no protection on here. So I don't really want to go in with washes laden with thinners. Because if I go in with acrylic thinners, it could be fine. If I get a load of like, you know, acrylic thinners and some paint and thin them down, it might be fine. It might just strip the paint off. So I need to blow my nose. Give me one second. I'm going to mute the microphone for a second while I blow my nose. There we go, do apologise. Uh, David Sanderson says, more northern than Michael Parkinson. That's what I was actually going to say, and I forgot half the line. Um, Print Guru is in, welcome Print Guru. Uh, Juan Ferrara says, hey Fox, have you tried the weathering pencils from AK Interactive? Honk, says Spoonmonger. Um, no, I haven't actually. I have used I have used coloured pencils before. I've got some... I have, I have, wow, hello, start again. Let's start that whole sentence again. I do have somewhere some watercolour pencils. Uh, which I've used before, but they're a bit, they're a bit, they're all right. But I've not tried the weathering pencils. I'll have to get some of those and try them out. Uh, right, so what we're going to do? Well, I've not quite decided. I will, I know for a fact there will be some Steel Legion drab. This will occur. Dry brushing of this will occur. However, we may also do some, uh, possibly, Talon sand, maybe some Zandri dust. Maybe. There'll be dry brushings. However, I may want to do some funkiness with a couple of shades. We've got Fuegan Orange and Cassandora Yellow. I may want to get funky with those for rustiness. However, I've also got some oil paints. Look at that. Oil paints. 502 oil paints. Not Starship Filth, but we've got uh, Light Rust Brown. We've got uh, Dark Rust. And I've got some light flesh tone. There you go. Pity Ted's not watching. Flesh tone's Ted. So we've got some oil paints as well. Now the beauty of the reason I've got the oil paints out is I don't know why I've got the oil. Oh yes, uh, because <laughs> I think then I can quite happily splash odorless oil paint thinners all over this model and it won't affect the acrylic paints at all. So if I want to make a wash, I can either thin these down with water. Or I can thin these down with oil paint thinners. None of that will affect it. Um, I could, of course, if I'd planned ahead, I could, of course, just matte varnish this uh, or gloss varnish it or whatever I wanted to do. And then I could do normal acrylic washes with acrylic thinners. But that's not really what I want to do. I don't mind. If you watched the U-Boat um, video that came out in the last couple of days, if you're a patron, you've got access to it for the next five, six days. Um, I do do a, a water-based acrylic wash on that for a very specific reason and it gives a very specific effect so i might do a water-based wash with these first so basically today it's going to be getting messy times so what i'm going to do i'm going to start by doing exactly what i just said a water-based acrylic wash now uh, if you're wondering why i'm using water apart from the fact it's protective i always say in my videos when you do a wash you want to use if you're making like a if you want to do any kind of like shading effect it's always better to use something acrylic to, to dilute your paint so like uh you know a Lamian medium from citadel or the vallejo glaze medium which is the same thing or even pledge floor care finish two times more shine if you want to use uh, a gloss because that's acrylic and it means that the paint will still behave the same way it's not breaking the paint down it's just diluting it it's having more clear liquid with less actual paint so it's, it just it makes the paint more transparent if you use thinners uh, it kind of breaks the paint down and it behaves differently and if you use water water has a completely different surface tension uh, and you'll see when i put it on here water will tend to go on the surface and then break into little patches and pools which is often not what you want when you're doing uh, any kind of shade layer or wash layer you don't always want that which is why i don't often use it however when you're doing things like rust you can sometimes use that to your advantage because I want rust to look patchy and in bits. I don't want it to look like a uniform shade coat. So what we're going to do is we're going to get interesting. We're going to try making a wash with just water. So I'm going to put that over there. This will require lots of hairdryer action today. So expect that. And also what I need to do is put down some newsing papers. 
Now, you might wonder why I need to put using papers down when I've got a big, fat, scruffy cutting mat. Um, but I just, I just do. Because I know I'll get this everywhere as well as on the big, fat cutting mat. So, I've not planned this. I've got no space to move things around now. Hang on. Uh, just have to fold this in a way that works. So I'm going to put those there. I'm going to put this here. Like this, you see. I'm going to move that over there. Oh, there's all kinds of things moving around now. Diddle -diddle 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 -do, diddle -diddle -diddle -do. This just means I will spill something somewhere and I'll look like a spoon. At least this way I don't make a massive mess. Potentially, I will make a massive mess. Uh, quick look at chat. Uh, Gaz Vickers says, Cheshire isn't northern, tis a soft southern place full of yuppies and such. Haha. <laughs> Cheshire is northern. Cheshire is more north than, say, Chris from Gross Models, who's totally southern. Cheshire's still north. Cheshire's right close to Manchester. I live but a few miles from Manchester town centre, so technically I'm on the cusp. I'm on the... I'm, I think I'm... I think technically I'm still in Greater Manchester, so I think technically I'm Manchester, which is beyond northern. Uh, oh, Walter Wilmoth, $5. Thank you very much, Walter. That's very, very kind of you. You're an absolute darling. I thank you very deeply. Also, you've taken a little bit of Kevin's health off. Uh, and Hanif Hafiz has just subscribed. Welcome, Hanif. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that whenever I do any other shows, you'll get notified. Uh, but, Walter, yes, very, very kind of you. Thank you very, very much. You've taken a little bit of Kevin's health off there. Uh, yes, yeah, so technically, I'm, I think I'm still Greater Manchester. So I, I never know if I count myself as Greater Manchester. But is that in Cheshire? I don't know. So I think it's... A, there you go. Hey, it's Manchester. You can't get more northern than Manchester. Uh, right, back to work. Have a good stream, says Juan Ferreira. Thank you very much for coming in, dude. You've obviously already gone by now, but I apologise. Uh, Fox thinks Yorkshire is northern, it's southern. Yorkshire's not southern. The southerners don't have words like lass. So there you go. Yorkshire's northern. Yorkshire's southern, I don't know. Just more northern than Birmingham. Uh, what else we've got? Uh, Captain Weirdbeard is in. Yeah, welcome, Captain Weirdbeard. I am here. Osric nine thousand says, "Wah ha uh, Oh, I, I real. Oh, start again. Wow. Candy Grand from Mongo says, "Oh, real life dead tree newspaper. Any amusing cartoons? No, it's a local Manchester. See, Manchester Evening News. I am northern. See, southern, southern my butt." Uh, Greater Manchester with a Cheshire postcode. Yep, that about works. Uh, health taken away with 774. All of England is southern, says Ghost Lyle. <laughs> Southerners have my... Dad says, Southerners have my barber. That's right. You say my barber, then you're going to make me go into this kind of accent. And then I'm going to talk like this for like an hour. Strangely enough, talking like this is quite quite relaxing way to talk. I think it is. I think really much it is a relaxing way to talk. Uh, Jerry's in Jerry says just a quick hi before I start driving don't drive in whatever we're doing uh, Vasily says just woke up welcome Vasily uh, welcome to both of you right we're going to make a wash and we're going to do it with the waters of life the waters of life I have here some waters of the life there'll be a lot of hairdryer action today king of the north says Quano man I think technically, Quano Man, you're a tiny, tiny bit more northern than me because you are actually central Manchester or Manchester way, aren't you? So I'm just outside of the boundary of Manchester, I think. I'm still technically greater Manchester. Uh, right, so we're going to make a, a sort of wash. Um, now, like I say, the reason we're doing this with water and not thinners, A, to protect the paint because it's not varnished, but B, I want it to be patchy. I want it to be... Um, kind of not nice and smooth and this is what this will do so i need to get a I need to get a sucky tube hang on let me find a sucky tube sucky tube so we've got cassandra yellow and fuegan orange what i think i'll do first i'll do cassandra yellow first now i could oh osric says got to go sunday dinner with the relatives have a good show thank you very much for coming in briefly uh, I think what I'll do is thinking, 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 thinking is hard. I'm going to take, oops, some of the Fuegan orange, not much, just a touch, few drops, don't need a lot. That's there. And then what I might do, 
is uh, add a little tiny bit oops and I'm going to be mixing and matching me me colours here is Scotland North says Snowman HFC Scotland is more north it's weird right because to me Scotland is north but it's not northern if that makes any sense at all it's north but to me northern is anywhere between sort of North Cheshire and the very bottom of Cumbria. That's kind of north to me. Like a up north kind of north. Whereas Scotland is just, it's northerly. It's north, but it's not northern. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe it makes sense. Right, so here we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you because I know I'm a long way away. I'm also a bit loud. I think I'm going a bit, I'm running a bit hot microphone wise. Let me turn myself down a little bit. Is that better? Can you still hear me okay? I've just turned my volume down a touch. I noticed I was clipping a bit. Do I sound okay? Let me know. Uh, let me adjust the zoom -age. Don't want to zoom in a lot, but I want to zoom in a bit. Where's the thing? There we are. Where? There it is. Right, I'm going to make a little mark so I know where you are. Where the camera is, that's where I want to be. All good, cool. That's where the camera is. Right, so we're gonna get this on. I'm not gonna use a nice clean, a nice decent brush because it's 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 crappy weathering. So what I'm gonna do, to what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some gloves on because the last thing I want is fingerprintings. Jerry says, just been to a model show in Perth, Dad, met up with Spiddy and spent way too much money. Oh, that must be the photograph in the boom hut then. Awesome, awesome. Perth, not Perth, Australia, obviously, because that would be like, you know, be a long way to go for a model show. You never sound okay, you have that silly accent. Paul from Team Inept is in. Hello, Paul, like and subscribe. Oh, I don't know. I'm not from Birmingham. Whoa, I said that out loud, didn't I? <laughs> right, so we've got this basically bottle of uh, iron brew here, jar full of iron brew. Uh, this is what we're going to do the wash with, and we're going to do it carelessly. I'm not going to go over the whole model, but I'm going to assume there's going to be water build up on dozer blade, and the, sort of the, the tracks here, and maybe around the bottom, just towards the, the bottom of the vehicle. Nothing towards the top, really. And what I'm going to do is just basically what Ted would do, slap it on. Uh, now, when it goes on, it's going to be all but invisible. Make sure it's on the tracks as well. Uh, it's going to be not particularly visible. It's not going to stand out a lot. But the reason I've added that light orange is just to give it a little bit of kick. So I'm going to do it over the whole, the whole side piece. But I'll build it up towards the bottom. Now, what will happen with this, different to a regular wash that you do with any kind of glaze medium, um, is that it will obviously tend to focus towards edges and surfaces where it might collect. But it will also dry a bit patchily. It won't dry nice and even. If this was just a normal shade or shade diluted with the glaze medium, it would be kind of nice and even and it just collect around all the vertical and horizontal, or the horizontal surfaces and it'd look pretty good, but it would just be nice and even and that's a bit boring. I want it to I want the surface tension to break here and there and to make little patchy bits. I'm being generous with it. I'll go underneath anyway. I'm not really gonna see under here ever, but I'll go underneath anyway. There we go. There we go. Lovely, lovely. We'll get it get a good rummage around. I've got nowhere to actually hold it now, that's a difficult bit. This is the tricky bit. Uh, we'll get a lot on the dozer blade here. Now we are going to go back over these bare metallic parts on the dozer blades. So I'm not bothered if it, if it pulls there and makes little patches. It's more in this bit I want it to collect. Make sure it goes around the back of the dozer blade. Dozer blade! It's just making me want iron brew. It's just making me think of like LucasAid or iron brew or something. And I'll put a bit down on the front here. Just around that bit there. Just for the sake of it. So we've got it on the sides. Make sure it collects in the back of the dozer blade. Now, if you watched in my stuff for any period of time, you'll know that the one thing I don't do is fart about being delicate and careful and 
delicate tiny brush strokes and things when I'm doing things like washes I just get it all over and that's that's my way of doing things I'm not I'm not one of these people that spends a week doing oil streaks I appreciate that and I think it looks fantastic but I'm far too a far too lazy and b far too lazy but the way to think about my style is I'm not I'm not a super realist I'm more of an impressionist my style is more impressionist like an impressionist artist I give the impression of something I don't I don't try and make it super realistic so that's gonna stay there. I'm not doing the bottom of the tracks because they don't really matter so that's gonna sit there for a minute I'll just rinse the brush off quickly that's gonna be the first coat and it's gonna be we're kind of doing a glaze Uh, Andre Munoz uh, Oliveira says, uh, Hola, buen día, atento tu video, saludos desde Mexico. I do apologize for the accent. Uh, saludos desde Mexico. Welcome from, hello from Mexico. Hello, welcome, dude. Uh, I do talk very, very fast, so if you, if anybody, if native English speakers struggle, struggle to understand me, I do apologize if you struggle to understand what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> but welcome. I'm going to put some more on there. Uh, and we'll give this a blast of the hairdryer in a minute. Uh, what is chat doing? Do, 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 do. I need to get on the boom hut. And he got a link handy. Um, yes, could Dad or Paul, could you please post a link to the model maker's boom hut in the chat, please? I would do it, but I'm busy being pretty on telly, so. Uh, for those who didn't join at the start, I apologise. Today's beverage of litre of beverage of choice is actually tea, not coffee. I do apologise, but I've drunk so much coffee this morning. I have to do tea. Uh, let's have a look. Do -do 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 -do. Snowman says, Edinburgh don't have many good model shops. Ooh, Edinburgh. Oh, no. I don't know how many shops you'd have up there. Maybe not too many, eh? Eh? Yes, you're 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 Scotland, so you're you're not north, but you are northern. No, you're not northern, but you are north. You're further north than us. You're more Viking than we are. We're just northern monkeys, whereas you're just Vikings. Uh, let's have a look. Skullfish is in Skullfish. Welcome, Skullfish. Uh, Jerry says about one in Edinburgh and about one in Glasgow and little else. Oh no, that's why you do it online. Uh, this is the thing with model shops. Um, you know where I live, growing up. Uh, when I was a wee shaver of a lad, uh, I used to spend my spends every weekend. I'd go to my local model shop and, you know, there was the, the local model shop was like my home from home. It was a brilliant place. But you go there now and it's, it's one of those things where it's a bricks and mortar store that's just kind of changed from being a model supplier, which was the only place I knew to get models unless I went into Manchester City Centre. Um, and now it's just, it just does trains and a little bit and remote control and a little bit of airfix maybe. And if you're lucky, you might have some Tamiya paint, but probably not. So they'll have a little bit of model kits, but the most of it is trains and remote control. A lot of bricks and mortar store now have gone that way. And I said to the guy, because I went I went in there and I hadn't been in for about 25 years. And it was the same guy in there. And I was like, holy crap, you're still around. Um, and I'm going to put that as a th put that on there. And I said to him, I said, um, how come you're not doing the trains in the RC all the time? He said, he because that's where the money is. There's no, there's no money in normal model kits anymore, which was sad. But I do have a local games workshop store, which is, you know. 10 minutes away by car but even then other than that i don't even know if there's a store in manchester anymore so there's not that many bricks and mortar shops so if you haven't got a local model shop don't feel bad most places don't it's quite rare to have anywhere local now that does it um okay right what i'm going to do i'm going to give this a blast of the hair dry so i'm going to put the microphone on mute for a second talk amongst yourselves i don't want to deafen you back in a second
Hello, welcome back again. So, you can see now, it's not really done a lot that, it's, it's added the tiniest, tiniest tint of orange, which is quite a bright orange colour. That just, I'm just want iron brew right now. Um, a little bit, but doesn't really add much. Because we've thinned it with water quite a lot, it's very subtle. So we're doing it, it's almost like a glaze, it technically is a glaze. So we need to build this up, so it's gonna take a few coats of this. So even though I was really being generous and slapping it everywhere, you can see it really hasn't altered the colour much. So I can go in with a second coat. And I'm just really restricting it to the tracks. Which is where, you know, there'll be lots of water and rust and mud anyway. Really kind of restricting it to the tracks. And the dozer blade. And what we'll do is we'll just slowly build up this rust effect now you could like I say you could just do it as a neat shade just the shade on their own or you could thin it a little bit with say Lamy and medium but it wouldn't be the same and I, I really want to build it up slowly because if you'd use it as a neat shade if you put it on and then you realize you've put too much on you're just kind of screwed you, you're knackered at that point you've put too much on you can't take it off if you do it like this as almost a glaze then you've got the option to keep going or to stop when it starts to look pretty good. So you've got that option, you're giving yourself the option to stop any time. But if you just go in full fat with the with the shade, you're screwed. If you go too far, that's it, you're knackered. So I'll put that there, give it a second. And it's all about options, I want options, I want to have the option of stopping when I think it's got enough rust. Stay, stay, stay on target, stay on target, there, there you go. Now, what, I was about to put my brush in my tea to clean the brush, I won't do that. Uh, let's have a quick look at the, so this may be a bit of a, me interacting with chat a lot today, because there'll be a lot of periods where I'm just sitting around waiting for things to dry. So yay for you guys, you get to talk to me all day, woohoo! This thing's not quite the right, I need something smaller. This pot's not quite the right size. Uh, right, so yeah, so local model shops, I wouldn't I wouldn't really be too sad about it. Most places don't have lots of local model shops. There are places where they're very lucky, and this is in the UK, and they've got a shop, and it's got everything they need. And that's brilliant. But they're few and far between. They really are few and far between. I'm going to put a little bit of rust on the turret, but not much, just a little touch. Just so it's got something it just kind of matches then the rest of the the tone of the of the rest of the vehicle just the tonal shift i don't want the other one to have an orangey tinge and this have nothing so we'll give it a little touch but not much most of that will disappear anyway so i shall put that there um what was i going to say yeah so it's a shame but i think with the internet nowadays the only time I ever really go to a shop and buy now is if I need to get Games Workshop stuff. Um, I would say if you have a local Warhammer store, or it doesn't have to be Warhammer, if you have a local store that sells Warhammer stuff, be it a Warhammer store or a third-party independent store, I would say as much as you can, try and get it from them. Go to their store if it's, if it's accessible to you. Because what I'll do is, as much as possible, I will go to my local Warhammer store and support... Um, Chris, the manager there, because he's a really nice guy, and obviously, you know, if they don't do business for real, they get closed down. So I will always, and if it's an independent store, not a, not a Warhammer store, then even more, you know, you're supporting them. And the beauty is, even if you want to pre-order something, what I do is, if I want to pre-order something, I go to my local store and I pre-order it there, and I have it delivered either, I have it either delivered to him or delivered to me, it doesn't matter. But by pre-ordering it there, they get the, they get the. The tick and the sales ledger for that they get the credit for that so it counts towards their sales figures so if you have a local store that sells your warhammers or whatever tabletop game you like for the love of dog support them because it's a hard enough business this kind of nonsense and as you've seen with normal regular model shops even if you're not doing warhammer even if it's normal model making stuff if you've got a local model store that gives you everything you need support them go there buy stuff from them if you have the option buy from them and not the internet if you can't get it from them then obviously use the internet but it's worth supporting your local store because if, if we all just shopped on the internet all the time there wouldn't be local stores so there you go uh right let's have a look did somebody post the link for the boom hook by the way 
if one of you would be so kind. Uh, David uh, David Sanders says, no, Walton's Model Shop in Altrincham. That was my local model shop for many, many years. That's the one I'm talking about that's now just sells trains and stuff. So, yes, David Sanderson, you and I used to hang out in the same model shop. <laughs> yeah, he's still there. It's the same guy. Same guy running it. If you go if you go now, it's the same guy that was there in the 80s. Tall guy with the gaunt, the sort of sad-looking face. He always looked like that anyway. Nice guy. But I went in about two or three years ago and I hadn't been in for about 20 years. I said, have you got any Tamiya paints? And he went, no, I don't, don't sell them anymore. I'm like, oh. And all they had model-wise was some Airfix kits. I'm like, oh, okay. Jerry says, later's all. Have a good one, Fox. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, is anyone going to Warhammer Fest in a few weeks, says the print guru? Uh, I'm not. I'd have forgotten all about it, to be honest. George Gabriel says, I have local shops, but most products I use are not sold anywhere around here. You're kind of in a different scenario, though, because you're very, very isolated from the rest of the world. So that kind of makes a bit more sense. But with you, it's even more a case of, I'm sure you do already, support that shop as much as you can, but there'll be stuff you have to get on the internet. Uh... Uh, Vasily says something about being banned from somewhere. Not all model makers are nice people, mate. What we're we talking about? Yes. Uh, oh, there's some conversation going on about bad bad customers. I think. Uh, okay, I've kind of lost like I've lost track of what we're talking about now. Let me just scoot forward a little bit. Glasgow, Glasgow says Glasgow. I hate Glasgow. My dad was born and raised in Glasgow. <laughs> this is the best bit of the stream so far, says Paul. Which bit? Uh, there used to be the Red Balloon in Altrincham. Did some Citadel miniatures and planes? Yeah, the Red Balloon. God, yeah, Red Balloon. I forgot about that. The Red Balloon and Walton's in Altrincham. The Red Balloon was a model shop and a toy shop and... And I have fond memories going up the little tiny staircase in Red Balloon because downstairs was all toys and stuff. You've got the little staircase along the side, little tight staircase, and you turn left into the upstairs bit, which was where you had uh, lots of Ravel kits and the obscure kits and model kits and, bizarrely, model kits and Atari video games. Like, this is the 80s. These are the games from my Atari 400. So I got Caverns of Mars from the Red Balloon in Ultium. <laughs> Wow. Uh, got the sniffles again, I do apologise. Uh, Ghost Lyle says, anyone ever seen a football match in Glasgow between the Rangers and Celtic? All of Glasgow basically becomes a war zone, I can imagine. Uh, Spoonmonger says, we have quite a few hobby shops that are local here in Melbourne, although local in Australia. I've got to do it. Although local in Australia can mean within a thousand kilometres and require the use of wagon train for the trip. I've got to do it. Uh, Dad says, hey, Spreemunger, a friend of mine is in Frankston, does most of his buying by post. Uh, this too was a vast place. Uh, Spreemunger says he worked for Frankston for 10 years. They just opened the Games Workshop there a couple of months ago. Yes, uh, one of our friends lives in Frankston. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, do, 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 do. Rangers and Celtic isn't... Yeah, chat jumped. Rangers is gone. That was, oh, isn't anything? Uh, there we go. Rangers and Celtic isn't anything. Try a derby game. Hibs versus Hearts. Uh, if you're in Melbourne, Spreemonger, then you must be nocturnal. It's half past midnight there. Yes. Uh, used to go to Beatty's in Holborn when I was a kid. Dad says Beatty's used to be great. Well, the Red Balloon in Altering that I used to go to as a kid, that later became a Beatty's. And then it closed down. Uh, what else is chat doing? Every, everyone is a kind of reminiscing now about stores in their past. Wayne Haywood says, I like to support my local gaming stores as they're great for advice, friendly and free of use shop for gaming. Uh, Simon Reynolds is heading to Warhammer Fest. Got five entries for the Golden Demon. Good luck, dude. I'm sure you'll probably come first, second, third, fourth and fifth. Do let us know. Shout about it. Uh, Tima Nepp says, normally going upstairs in shops like that takes you to the porn section. This was the 80s and it was a toy shop. You wouldn't get this. There was no beaded curtain. You have to keep an eye out for the. If there's no beaded curtain, it's not porn. Uh, Snowband says, okay, who's been watching Thrones? Yes. Uh, oh, God, David says, I think it was called Toy Master. Yeah, it was Beatty's, the Red Balloon and Toy Master. God, I'm getting the flashbacks now. 
David, you probably have the same Alpine pop man that we used to have. Anyway, uh, how's this doing? Another hairdryer blast, I think. Let me put this microphone off for a second, and then we'll do another hairdryer blast. One second. And three, two, one, back in the room. Yes, there we go. Oh, one second. I need to open my door. It's quite warm today, and it's quite warm in here. And then I've got the hair dryer on. It's very warm. Uh, Scott Sutherland says he used to have a model shop in Kirkwall, but it's shut many years ago. Uh, any advice on putting physical chips on model kits? Says Rinks near. Um, yeah, it, um, there's two ways you can do it. You can physically do chipping using a chipping medium like chipping fluid, or you can just paint them on by hand. Um, I would say, have a look through my playlist because there's, there's lots of different things where I've shown chipping before. Um, have a look at probably the clearest one I show chipping on of two different options for painting on brush chips. Go and have a look at my AML90 Warhammer uh, Imperial Skitter build. There's a playlist called Imperial Skitter. And for physical chipping with, say, masking fluid, have a look at my transit build, because then I physically did chips. And for chipping with chipping fluids, I can't think when I did that. I think I did that on the Zaku when I was doing the head of the Zaku. So I'll have a look on my Perfect Grade Zaku playlist. It might be on there. <coughs> One other thing, by the way, I've noticed with playlists on YouTube, if you go into my playlists, uh, if you just look at the, the default playlist page, it looks like I've got like six playlists. I haven't. I've got loads of them, but you have to do the little drop down filter. And I can't remember if it's created playlists or playlists or something else. There's three different options. I think it's created playlists. If you select that, it will show you all my playlists. I just noticed it the other day. YouTube's a bit rubbish. It kind of shows you a handful of playlists. It's like, well, that's completely pointless. Right. Third time's the charm. A bit more orangey now this time. Again, focusing more towards the bottom. So I'm going to pull the rust down. I'm going over the top as well. Going over the top now, you are. I've gone well over the top. There we go. A bit of splodge. Again, don't be afraid to get generous with this watered down mix because it does fade away. Re record, not fade away. People like me and Dad will know what that means. Those of you who are younger will have a clue what that means. Re record, not fade away. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. I'll just stop now. Show me age. Do, 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 do. I don't know how many coats this will take. I mean, doing this as a shade would be quicker, just as a, a standard shade, without doing the build-up and without watering it down. But like I said, 
you, once you've put too much on, that's it. You've put too much on, you can't go back. So this just gives me a bit more freedom to to play and wing it and see if I can get freaky and funky with it without making terrific mess, which I'm making anyway. You see why I put the paper down now, though, can't you? <laughs> yeah. Put a little bit of paint down on the front there, I think. Do, 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 do. Now, it does depend on the paints you've used. If you did this over a gloss varnish, then what you'd find is the water would just literally, the surface tension would break and it would go into little tiny specks and puddles and little angular blobs. Uh, with some paints, it will do that. And sometimes it won't. This, it's not really doing it quite as much as I thought, but I made because I've put, maybe because I put quite a lot of shade in there. If I didn't have very much shade at all, it would, the surface tension would split. But because the shade's in there, it's got some surface tension. So it's, it's doing a bit of what I want it to do. But it's still flowing differently than it would if I was just using a shade or if I should thin the shade with medium of some sort. What I would say whenever you're doing this kind of thing is just have just practice with different mixes and different thinners and see what effects you get. Changing what you thin things with changes how they behave. Now it's not the same with enamels and, uh, and oils, but when it comes to acrylics, you've got binders in the in the in the paint that give it its its qualities that determine how its surface tension works, how the pigment settles out, how it dries, how it self levels. If you thin those with water or solvents, then they break down and that's why it changes behavior. Like water or thinners, that's why it changes. If you just add glaze medium or glaze or anything like that, which is just paint without pigments, you're just adding, increasing the amount of clear paint without increasing the amount of pigment. So if you use a medium, you're diluting the paint and it makes it more transparent. If you use thinners or water, you're thinning the paint and it changes the way it behaves. So it is worth experimenting and having fun. I wonder if this is going through the newspaper. Let's have a look. Oh, not yet. It will do. It will do. So yes, glazes allow you to dilute the paint and make it more transparent. Thinners and solvents and water thin the paint and change the way it physically behaves. Let's have a quick look at the chat. Be -be -de -be -de. Dad says, Orkney is fabulous. Loved it there. Hopefully going back in August. Yay, because Orkney went up to visit uh, Orkney. Dad went up to visit Scott. I must go up someday. Do, oh, uh, chat just jumped. Uh, Candy Graham says, I'll be visiting a brick and mortar comic gaming model shop later today for the tabletop gaming. I always buy something, always on the way out. Yep, that's good. That's the other thing as well. If you're lucky... Uh, a lot of the sort of local stores, the stores that sell Warhammer stuff, the independent stores that, you know, the third party retailers. Some of them are a bit snarky and they ask you to pay for tables, but a lot of them understand the sort of the idea that if they just make their tables free, if you can go in and play, then you're, you're going to be there. You're going to buy something. You might, you might, you know, people may abuse it and make the most of the free tables, but that's the point. A good, a good sort of uh, independent store will give free table access. Because they know it's about building community and it's about getting you to spend your money when you didn't actually plan on spending money. And that's why the GW stores are great, because they don't charge us to use their tables. You have to book them in, you have to book a slot. You know, you can't just totally have to say, can I book it for next Wednesday at two o'clock for two hours? But you don't pay for it. Uh, have you tried using a sponge ring, says Dad? I don't even want to know what that's talking about. I don't even know what that conversation is. Uh, George says, okay, I'm off. I have to watch my Infinity War before Endgame. Okay, thanks for coming in, George. You're probably already gone. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I hope your um, rebuilding of Gumplers is going well. If, you, if you're not aware, George posted up in the boom up the other week that there was a crash and a bang and all his Gumpler had fallen off the shelf. All of them had gone onto the floor and they're all in bits. And I was like, ah. Uh, although I think he's managed to, I think he might have managed to recover a lot of them. Hopefully. We shall see. Fingers crossed. Uh, how about chipping with chips and curry sauce, says Print Guru. This is how you know Print Guru is a northerner. Curry chips and sauce. I mean, chips and curry sauce. Quantum Man says, am I the only Wally that thought, hmm, does he mean McCain's microchips, not just the chips from the chippy? Oh, I used to love McCain microchips. Pascal says, I used to have uh, five model shops in my town. Now, the closest by is the 30-minute drive. Meanwhile, I live in the Ranstead in the Ran... I'll get that right. The Randstad, which is the busiest part of the Netherlands. Randstad. 
Uh, yes, you did that on the shield as well with the white stripe. I think that was the Zaku as well, says Walter Wilmoth. I did some chipping effects on the shield for my Giara Zulu. If you go into the Giara Zulu playlist, it's a beginner build. I did an extra episode where I had uh, a shield that I was doing some kind of chipping effect on, but it was more like a rusty spot chi effect than a chipped paint effect. But it was still using chipping fluids. Uh, Rink says, I'll check those videos. Thanks, Fox. Uh, the, the trick is, with if you're using chipping fluid, uh, it says in the video, but if you're using any kind of chipping fluid, you know, you spray it on and then you chip the paint off. Um, most of them never tell you how long to leave it. I found, if you're using the ammo stuff especially, get your paint down, make sure it's cured, spray on your chipping fluid, dry it with the airbrush, just air, dry it so it's flash dried. Within minutes of it being dry, get your paint on go go lightly with the paint mist your paint on you don't want a thick coat within minutes of the paint being dry then start chipping away if you leave it too long it becomes harder and harder the way chipping fluids work is that what you do is you get your chipping fluid down on the surface so you've got so you've got a layer of black paint then you put some chipping fluid then you put a layer of say red paint then what you do is you go in with some water and a brush or a cocktail stick and you'll start working away on the paint and the paint will start to chip away what actually happens is the chipping fluid is soluble in water. The water goes, sort of soaks through the acrylic paint on the top and then dissolves the chipping fluid, which takes the paint with it. And that's where the chips come from. The same as hairspray, but a bit more controllable. But that's why you don't want to make your paint layer too thick because the water has to get through it. Lynn is in. Heidi peeps, I'm here. Looking awesome, Fox. I've missed you all. Hey, Lynn. Missed you too. I'm going to tell you how it's going to be, ding, 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 says Dad. Dad knows what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, Springmonger says, um, chipping, regards chipping, it works well if you do it only for the larger damage and use chipping paint methods for the rest. Stops it looking like the model's been put through a grinder. Yes. Uh, don't look at my, um, uh, which one was it now? The white one that I did, that, uh, St. Andrew Stein. Don't look at my St. Andrew Stein as a way to learn how to do paint chipping, painting on, because I did a right bad job of chipping on that. It came out looking terrible. Uh, Lynn is not in work, but might have to go for a bit. Scott says, yes, Fox, you must come visit. I'd have to make sure the car can survive a journey for hundreds and hundreds of miles. I get panicky when I have to drive two models, and that's only 30 miles away. In puffing season, of course, yes, I would come up during puffing season. What's good medium MIG paints will the Citadel cross over? Uh, if you're using MIG, ammo by MIG paints, they're just, well, mm, that's a bit more tricky. Um, ammo by MIG paints are water-based acrylics, the same as Citadel and AK and um, uh, Vallejo. But they're kind of a bit different in the way they dry. I would assume glazed mediums are going to be just fine with the ammo paints. Uh, I can't imagine there being a problem with them at all. Uh, but I'll just do some quick tests first because uh, they are a little bit different to most acrylic paints in that, you know, when you're spraying them on, if you spray them on really thickly, they'll just go shiny and lumpy and have little marks everywhere. Whereas most acrylics, you can do that and get away with it. So they are they are kind of a bit finicky, but they should be fine. They should be fine. <laughs> Hit your lift with me, Fox, says Dad. I could do that. I could do that. T. But that means you're going out of your way, Dad. You have to come all the way from Scouse land to come and grab me and then drag me all the way up to Scotland land and then all the way up to Orkney land. Then again, if I get to see the puffins, then that's cool. Right, hair dryer time. I'm going to give it a quick blast. So again, I'll turn the microphone off. I should be back in a moment. There's nowhere to hold this thing. It's like, oh, I should have... Oh.
Okay, I think one more coat of this. Uh, now the beauty of this method, with all the happy accidents, I got a bit on my finger and then I put it there and I put my finger there and it went blob. That's fine because it'll dry like a rusty patch. I like that. Happy accidents. So I think one more coat. Now if I wanted to, I could use logic and build up the rusty colour at the bottom of the treads here by doing more towards the middle and the bottom and then another coat, another coat and build it up like a glaze and less at the top and you get a fade from a little bit of hint of orangey rust here to more down at the bottom. However, a lot of this is going to be covered by dirt and dust so there's no point going to all that effort when I'm going to cover it up with dry brushing. So what I'll do is just another overall coat just to orange it up one last time and then we'll move on to the next step. I think once that's done, so we'll get one last blast all over the top here like this, you see? Yes. Did it. So how is everyone anyway? Uh, how are you all doing? I hope you're all. I hope you had a good bank holiday weekend. If you're in the UK last week, hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, we, for some reason, I don't quite know why, how the lottery came out this way, but somehow in the UK we had a bank holiday weekend and stonking gorgeous weather. I don't understand that at all. It just makes no sense whatsoever. But it it seemed to be the way it was, so that was cool. Um, yes, hope you had a good weekend. Do 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 do. I've got a really itchy nose today, and every time I put gloves on, I'll have to do something where I can't afford to be scratching my nose. I get an itch on my nose. Oh, it's quite annoying. So we're just going to work that around there. Now, if you were if you were taking care and doing this carefully, you could really build up these layers. Like I was saying, if you weren't doing like a dirt and dust level, you could really build up these layers to get a nice fade from not rusty to rusty. And that's where using it like a glaze comes in. You can ooh, run out here on the dozer blade. Ooh, get some, get some going on there. And we are spent. I'm gonna put it at a funky angle like that so it can sit on the dozer blade and build up a bit. Or maybe not. I don't know. We'll just leave it flat. Ooh, or you could just drop it. There you go. There's nowhere to hold this thing. Oh, stay. So yes, you can. Like I say, if you want to build up a real nice fade. Uh, for rusty colours, you could paint the whole surface the rust colour. Like paint this, imagine this was a, a side here. You paint the whole thing a rust colour, then you paint half from halfway down to the bottom the rust colour, and another coat from say halfway down there, and you build it up. That's how you do glazes on on vertical surfaces, and that way you get a fade from one layer of rust colour to two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers, and because it's a glaze technically. One layer is probably really transparent. Two layers is a little less transparent. Three layers is less transparent again. And the more layers you add, the less transparent it gets. And that's how glazes work. So you don't just paint. I mean, I've done here. I've painted all of it, all the treads, the same amount of times. Because there's no point me building up a fade here because it's going to get covered with dust and dirt. So there's no point me doing that. But if I wanted to, that's what I would do. Right. Let's have a quick look at the chattings. I mean, what I might do, once we've got dust and dirt on there, I can always go back and you can actually do stippling with the shades if I want any areas to have particularly rustiness. But we can come back to that. Uh, the beauty of the method is the extended periods of silence, says Paul. Thanks very much. Gimp. Uh, I would want to go on that road trip. Our sense of humour all piled up in a car. Good time, says Walter. Oh yeah, it'd be a nightmare. Just don't give me any kebabs the day before. I'm tired as hell. They switched up my schedule of work, says Nim. Don't. Drugs and alcohol. I don't recommend drugs and alcohol. That was a joke. Uh, great. Now that I get to be here, I was off on Monday and no e-model show. Yeah, it was a bank holiday. Sorry, Lynn. Uh, uh, anyone got advice on painting tartan, says Snowman HFC. A very, very fine brush and a lot of patience. Uh, Google Google reference material. You don't have to use a real tartan pattern, but it'll give you some ideas because everybody has in their head what they think tartan looks like. If I said to 100 people, draw tartan on a piece of paper, draw a some colour pencils, draw a tartan pattern, they'd all have an idea of what they think tartan looks like and they all draw it and most of it look terrible. Because tartan, you think in your mind it looks like a certain thing, but it's not. It's, it's very subtle. So do some reference, have some look at reference pictures of tartan. And then just use a very fine brush. 
it's drying nicely. I've only done the one coat on there because I don't want it to be like it's horribly wet. This is the turret so it's not going to be like covered in splashes and water from driving around as much. So it'll have a tint of rust, but not much. Uh, Dad says special paint snowman. Yeah, get some tar tartan paint. It's an old joke, tartan paint. Uh, yeah, so anyway, how is everyone? I uh, hope you're all well. As always, the standard question, I know I think Dad asked this before the show went live, but standard question, what's on your bench and what's in your belly? As in, what are you working on right now? I know you may have already mentioned this before, but it wasn't live on stream. Uh, what are you working on at the minute? And if you've not had your dinner already, what are you planning on having for your dinner? Or what have you had for your dinner? I've got a really sniffly nose today. Oh, I do apologise. Do 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 do. Yeah, Dad says, "What's in your bellies and bench?" Vasily says, "I have painted tartan once. I found the blue tartan easier to paint. Red is quite hard to do, so don't. So done easy blue instead. Yes, yeah, so if you're doing a tartan pattern or any kind of pattern where you've got stripes and things going over, and especially if it's a tartan pattern with very fine stripes, you don't have the luxury of using uh, a base coat." underneath yellows and reds as if you know as we all hopefully know when you're painting yellows and reds you want a nice base coat underneath because yellows and reds are very transparent same with whites so underneath it when you paint yellow for example you want a nice either brown or or, or more solid yellow color or a neutral color or something like that underneath reds you want a bright white or a metallic color or just something bright and brightly colored that you can see uh, but it's not always possible if you're painting single fine lines with a very fine brush on tartan pattern you can't underline that with white or red so yeah red would be a challenge uh, let's have a look uh, what's the bench got to build mine belly had cereal yes if you, uh, you're just still settling into your house settling into that wow word lynn you're still settling into your house aren't you so yes hopefully what's on your whatever workbench is at the moment before it's a workbench uh, so look, Wayne Haywood says painting miniatures and leftover Chinese. Oh, it's the best. Jamie Bowen says on the bench, one, one, one. Hang on, I need tea. There we go. Jamie Bowen says bench one one hundred scale team Yankee Charlie's Chieftains belly. I'll, I'll read that again. One one hundredth team Yankee Charlie's Chieftains belly roast chicken with all the trimmings. Oh, there's always a lot of roast chicken going on these Sundays, isn't there? Uh, Adam Clark says Bandai Y-Wing and Cream Crackers. Ooh, Y-Wing. Candy Graham says, right now I'm building the Gundam ZGMF X-20A that I bought. That's a strike Gundam to you and me. Freedom Gundam, if I remember rightly. Uh, I bought at the hobby store specifically to build during Warhammer Sunday sessions. Good girl. Scott Sutherland says, have my birthday lunch. Oh, which reminds me, happy birthday to both Dad and Scott Sutherland. A bit late, but happy birthday to both of them. Had my birthday lunch with my family, homemade curry in my belly, Magash 7C on the bench. If we needed to ask, Scott will be working on an Israeli Defence Force vehicle of some sort. He loves his IDF. Vehicles and armour. Uh, Tyrone, I'll be painting some Death Watch Space Marines and eating some pie. Snowman HFC says it's for my Ultramarines. Oh, I don't I think we're in the middle of a conversation there. Uh, Ghost Lyle says Space Marines are donuts. Yes, it's a good combination. Lynn says bench nothing, desk boxes I have no room to build right now. Oh. Uh, Rinks near is scar scaring my HG Grimgird, making it like a worn night. Oh, I think you mean scarring. Yeah, scarring my HG Grimgird, making it like a worn at night. I like that. Uh, Death Guard Rhino and Steak and Haggis Pies, says Snowman. Oh, Steak and Haggis. Vasily says an SU 33 and Pot Noodle. Get in, Pot Noodle. Yes, 10 points. Spreemunger says on the bench 3 day printed cartoon wombat for a job I'm doing could you just be more Australian making a model of a wombat <laughs> a 135th resin ground crew for Gumpler vignette belly chicken schnitzel sandwich with cheese and half a bag of salt and vinegar chips crisps that's not very Australian uh, Jamie Bowen is looking on eBay at the 1144th Zaku 2 uh, if that's the real grade yeah it's a good kit the real grade um, if it's the HG, yeah, it's still a good kit. HGs are still good. Uh, Mickle Pickle is bench, HG Strike Freedom, and then there's belly not eaten yet. There you go, it's rife with the possibilities. 
Quano Man has got an 8080 that he's adding a custom paint job at the 501st Legion, and to the black tyre from a moped punctured, and the battery of my other bike on the bench. It's so crowded on there. Wow, yeah. Hello. Uh, Wayne Haywood says, Happy birthday, Scott and Dad. And the print guru says, Apparently it's a roast chicken day, according to the missus. Well, there you go. That's correct. Uh, do, 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 do. Scott Sutherland says, Thanks, Wayne. Dad says, Cheers, Wayne. Lynn Dipple's asking for help designing her stickers. Uh, so anybody who's good at the designing, give her a shout. Uh, Candy Graf Monger says, cool, putting a 501st paint job on the Atat to Quano Man. Nim Sindarin says, bench, I'm about to play D&D. Oh, sorry, D&D, I should say. But I'm working on my close quarters, stealth, mig, jester, and belly. Nothing right now, but possibly something in a bit. There you go. Right, I'm going to take a quick one minute break because I need to go and use the bathroom and some of the bits. I'm going to be back in one moment. I'll put it on the holding screen. I shall return very shortly. Hang on, I've got to press the button first. returned apologies right, i need some new gloves now but i need to let my hands dry off in a minute uh sorry about that i'm back uh, let's have a look uh, the tea got to him says Lil, says lynn <laughs> uh, la, la, la. what were you doing who's working on what uh skullfish says bench 132 and revel spitfire mark 2a belly foxes chunky chocolate chip cookies what my chocolate chip cookies why are you eating my cookies i want them back Timmy Nip says, enjoy your poo, Fox. It was, I wasn't having a poo, honestly. A bit like half an hour. I wouldn't do that in the middle of a show. <sighs> Anyone else skipping around in circles? I think they're just enjoying the little bit of music there, weren't you? Right. I need to replace my gloves. I went for a wee. I didn't go for a poo. Honestly. Do you know? Eh. So we've got what three, I think, or four coats of that orange now. So I think I'll give it a quick blast of the hairdryer in a second. Other than that, that should be that bit done. Mental note when the box of disposable gloves says large, don't believe a word of it. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I've got 100 gloves that barely fit. It's fantastic. <sighs> right. Quick swig of the tea. Aww. So what we're going to do is let's have a quick look at this. So it's still moist, moist. So I'm going to give it a blast with the hairdryer. What I will do is take out any of the excess fluid in there because I don't need it to be in there. Can't see that anyway. So I'm going to give it a blast with the hairdryer. So again, it's a talk amongst yourselves for a moment. Guanaman says, did Fox just poo-poo Team Inep's poo joke? 
<laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, I need to use a bathroom and some some of the bits. What bits? Oh, no, I, I had to go and check on something. I heard a noise. I had to go to the loo anyway, but I heard a noise and I had to go and check on something as well. Uh, right, so I'm going to... If I can get these gloves on properly, they're really not even on. Ugh. Right, I'm going to hairdryer this. Give me one moment. I shall be back. I'm just turning the microphone off. Don't panic. back right what's next it's still moist in a few places but not majorly uh, let's have a look chat is saying uh, the noise was the chicken kicking the lid off the roasting tin yes <laughs> dead air demolition man is a classic yes I don't like turning the microphone off and doing that but unfortunately we're doing this kind of thing not a lot of choice when it's the stuff that needs to be hair dried I don't want you to listen to hair dry for five minutes because that would just be annoying uh, but hopefully you can see the kind of effect. It, it's kind of more evident here on the front, where you see it just goes from like no rust at all to this kind of slightly orangey stained area. Uh, it's kind of quite subtle. It's really not that visible. It's more visible on that side, I think. But again, my logic is that a lot of this will be covered up by the dust and dirt. If I wasn't going to be doing sort of dusty dry brushing, I would spend some time putting rust in some of the, you know, the recesses more obviously. But it's kind of most of be going to be covered up anyway so i'm not going to go to all that effort and then cover it up with the with the dust and dirt now again uh, in reality a lot of what i would do i would do a lot of things like pigments uh, if this wasn't a tabletop model i do a lot of things like pigments and using them to make washes and things like that however this is is going to be a play played model it's going to play on the tabletop and the thing with pigments is if you start using pigments they're just going to start coming off because it's going to be a handled model you're going to be handling it so a lot of this is a trade-off between what i can do that looks good and stuff that i have i can't really use because it's it's going to be handled pigments are great if you're making a display queen that's going to live in your display cabinet 
when you want to play it on the tabletop, you have to make some compromises. And I know you will, we all see pictures of these great forge world builds where they've got tanks and stuff with powder everywhere and they look fantastic. Yeah, half the powder is going to come off after you've played it about five times. Uh, Paul Di Tommaso is in. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Welcome, welcome, Paul. How's the candy factory? Uh, at least Fox could have zoomed in so we could read the ads on the newspaper. It says Candy Ground for Mongo. Caravans from 12,995. Site fleas included. 12 month season. Amazing facilities. Contact Georgia on 07946 192 140. There you go. Write that down. Uh, what's the next one? Let's have a look. Toyota Yaris Verso 2002 MOT October CD player alloy wheels electric windows five door hatchback runs well seven hundred and twenty five pounds part exchange welcome oh seven seven oh seven four nine one four one one there you go uh, what else are we selling let's have a look uh, if you're a real masochist you can have a Hyundai Getz 2005 12 months MOT one litre engine six door hatchback CD player electric windows drives well £595 part exchange welcome 07707 491 411 I'm assuming these people have no problem with me reading out their mobile numbers on the internet because they put it in a paper anyway uh, cheap caravans for sale we've got a Citroen C3 Desire don't buy Citroens and Renaults they're terrible there's another Hyundai Getz there's a Daihatsu Trios Little Jeep, 1300 engine, 2004, MOT July, alloy wheels, something I can't, electric, something, great engine and bodywork, something 98,000 miles, CD player, £1,095. Part exchange welcome, 07707 491 411. Uh, and lastly, we'll do one last one, flatbed trailer, substantial Substantial braked two wheel flatbed trailer, five foot four inches tire by three foot four inches, 14 inches wheels, sweet suit builder, 200 pounds, 0161485 There we go, that's today's advertising nonsense. Right, so I'm going to get rid of this paper now. Just move that over there. Because we don't need this paper now for the time being. We might come need to come back to it. Uh, but I don't think we do for the moment. So I'm going to put that over there as well. This is where we see if it's soaked through the paper. Nope. Awesome. Can go away. There we go. <coughs> Have a quick look at the chat. All well is here at the factory. Oh, sorry. All is well here at the factory. Uh, Lynn Dipple says, uh, oh, how much was that Corsa going for, says Vasily. Oh, I've, I've thrown it away now. Hang on. Was there a Corsa? I didn't notice a Corsa. Hang on. Hang on. Where's a Corsa? Where's a Corsa? There's no Corsa. There's a Ford Z. There's a Focus Z Tech. Uh, Focus Z Tech for 595 quid. 2003 five door hatchback. MOT November 90,000 miles. CD player. Alloy wheels. Why did they put a CD player on these? Because unless the car's from like 1994, isn't the CD player like saying it has wheels or it's got an engine? Isn't it kind of. What options do you have in a 10-year-old, 15-year-old car? It's not going to have a tape deck, is it? Not like 2005. Uh, 07707491411 for the Ford Focus 1600 Z-Tech. There's no Corsa. Sorry. <coughs> right. Anyway. Free ads. Haha, <laughs> says Rinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some some bloke in, like, Duckinfield somewhere getting a call from somebody in, like, Australia. I believe you're selling a car, mate. I want to buy your trailer. You say it's good for business builders. Yeah. I want to buy your £500 trailer. Terrible accent. I apologise. Uh, let's have a look. I have to tell you, when I got up this morning, it was cold and wet outside. Now I've had the lights on, and it seems to have suddenly gone tropical, so I'm sweating like a person at the moment. <laughs> Uh, shipping will be a pain for me, so nope, says Lynn. This is totally free advertising for, on telly for peeps, for peeps flogging stuff. You know, I should start a YouTube channel where I just read out classified ads, shouldn't I? <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, let's have a look. Sally James, there it is, done it, <sighs> says Dad. Yes. Right, so uh, I'm going to give this a quick blast with the hairdryer, just because it's got some sticky bits. One second.
Right, now, I've just realised I made a terrible, terrible mistake. All that stuff I've just done, I should have done after I did some metallic dry brushing. Oh, well, never mind, there we go, nice and shiny. I have to do the metallic dry brushing now, not to worry. Because I'm going to do some like metallic dry brushing on here. But that's going to be rusty. They may have to do more rusty washes later. Oh, well, never mind. It's not the end of the world. So, what is next? Next, we need to do some metallic -y dry brushings, I think. Uh, and for this, we are going to use... I'm going to use... Let's choose a colour. We are going to use the... I'm going to use Rune Fang Steel. Now, this is not going to be staying shiny. This is going to go dry brushed on. In fact, no, let's not use that. Let's use, if I can find it. Do, 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 I'm looking for the thing. Where's my Necron compound? Lead Belcher, don't want that. That's Iron Breaker. That's not what I want. Where's my Necrons? Oh. There is the Necron compound. That's in this trash dig. It's grey. Trying to find a metallic colour when you've got a rack full of different colours that all look metallic. Stormhouse silver. Oh, I can't find my Necron compound. Oh, oh there we go. Yes. Right. This will not be staying metallic. Obviously, at some point, I've got to do a matte varnish. So... This is just going to be a base metallic colour. So again, I'm not, I, I kind of should have done this before the rust really, but we can always put more rust on later. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a big fat dry brush, big fat dry brush, and a slightly less big fat dry brush, smaller brush, and a smaller brush again. Uh, and this is going to be fairly, fairly not accurate. We're just going to do some basic dry brushing here of the metallics. I don't know what I'm putting the paper down there for. Now, if you know about dry brushing, you know how this works. It's just literally a case of, well, what am I shaking it for? I'm shaking the Necron compound. It's like gel. It doesn't, it doesn't come out of the pot, idiot. Uh, we want some subtle edge, pick up some edges first of all. So I've got here... I should move the camera out. Do I need to move the camera out a bit? No, I'll be all right. I've got a little bit on the big fat brush here. Get a bit more actually, because that's a bit slim. So first thing I want to do is just get some edges. And again, this is still going. This is going to go really matte later on. This will be hidden a lot of this by a, the the matte varnish, but it's just to get a grey area. We've put the orange tinge down, especially on the blade here. We've put an orange tinge down. Now I want to get... Okay, this is my logic to the dozer blade. The paint's scraped off and a lot of it will be rusty, but because there's a lot of sort of you know material going across the blade here, not all of it's going to be rusty. The rusting will actually be quite minimal. So what I'm actually going to do is do a lot of this where there's a rust patch. Because if you go and look at an actual dozer blade, a lot of it's actually shiny clean metal because it's constantly getting rubbed and polished by dirt and dust and debris so what I want to do is get some off on there is actually build up the metallic here first and foremost with this like I say this will get it matte varnished and when it matte varnishes it'll just kind of look like a dull grey metallic colour that's fine because we'll do a final going over later on so it look it look a bit weird now because you'll be thinking it just looks like shiny metal. Trust me, once it's once it's sorted, it'll all make sense. So we'll come back and we'll do a bit on there. I'm going to do it this way. I want to suggest the scrape. I'll do that with a smaller brush because I can't quite get it in there. Get it in, lad. So that looks a bit weird for the moment. But like I say, once it's once it's matte varnished. And we'll do a bit more rust and stuff later on if we need to. That will kind of start to make sense. I'll put a bit on the edge here. A bit on the edge here. There we go. Uh, get some more. I 
I do like Necron compound. If you weren't putting a varnish on the end, it does give you a nice metallic sort of twinge effect, sort of sparkly effect, but it is a nice metallic colour. But I'm going to be matte varnishing over it. So now I want to go over the tracks, but very lightly, and just give them a slight effect. I'm really trying to pick up the edges on these because these are metal tracks, and the rust is just supposed to be really in the in the gaps. So we'll go over there like that. Okay, I'm not being super accurate or careful. You know how I work. Getting it on. Get it on. Really worried about underneath because you're never going to see this bit underneath. So I'll do them anyway. But okay. And then what I want to do is just kind of very loosely pick up some edges, but not every single edge because I don't want it to look like I've just gone around all the edges. I want to just pick out random edges here and there just to give this effect. A lot of this will disappear under, you know, weathering and dust, but. And you don't want to do every single edge because that just looks like you've weathered it with a dry brushing. But you want to pick out some bits here and there. And I can, you can use a big brush. You don't have to use a little brush for this. Uh, here, for example, I want to pick out this edge down here, bottom of the door. Because I want to suggest not... I'm going to use a smaller brush. When you're doing like exposed metal where paints come off, it's not always going to be completely rusty. Sometimes it'll be a mixture of rust and not rust, a rust and bare metal. So, for example, down here, I might mix up this so it's not just rusty. There's some bare metals. We'll get some. We'll get some metal scraping on the top. This just suggests where the, you know, there's constant, constant contact, so perhaps it's gone rusty, but then it's constantly being rubbed and polished with hands and boots and feet and stuff, and therefore it kind of, the rust gets rubbed away and you just get the bare metal. So there we go, a little bit on the top there, perhaps. And we'll pick up some of these edges. Uh, there's still lots of stuff we need to do. I need to do those little side pieces again. I keep forgetting I've got to do the little scroll work bits. We'll get around to doing that. That's there. Come back with a big brush because I didn't do that side. Do do some sticker giveaways in a minute when I've done this. Do do do. So you can use the big brush to sort your, your broad strokes out. But again, a lot of this is going to be covered up anyway, so I'm not too fussed. Now here you've got this door here. I'm going to kind of work it down the middle there a little bit. Because that's where you would get paint scraping away. Now again, Keep in mind, a lot of this will just be matte and grey. So even though I'm doing this now, a lot of this will blend away when we matte varnish it. So what the very last thing I'll do on this is come back and do some more metallic dry brushing over bits that I want to be shiny. I'm going to go over these guns as well, because these need to be lightened up. But for these, I can just be fairly carefree and just lighten them up big time. Lighten them up big time. Need more paint on there more paint so I like to do my metallics in stages base colors then washes then lighten them up it's always about bringing it back to the light and then when your matte varnishes are on go back in and pick out the specular highlights and I, I, like I've said this is going to be a tabletop play model so I'm not being super super you know display cabinet accurate here or careful I'm not being that anal about it purely because it's never going to be seen from more than three feet away it's always going to be like three feet away and it's it's going to be on the tabletop so there you go you can be a little more generous or a little more slapdash if I was doing this for a display cabinet I'd spend a lot more time actually painting paint chips in metallics 
but I'm not doing that, so it's just about getting the, the hints. Remember, this is an impressionist piece. Think of it that way. So, that's that side. River image around there. You can be fairly carefree if you want. All adds to the accidental happiness or the happy accidentness of it. Uh, I'm not going to bother about the underneath because we're never going to see that. I will do some on the back of the dozer blade. This bit's obviously going to be very silvery because it's basically dragged along the ground all the time. Get some of that going on there. We'll do a bit of that there, just for the edge, because you will see this edge here. Okay, get some on the top. So again, I'm not being careful, not being delicate. Right, so that's going to do for that. Get a little bit on the turret. Not too much on the turret. This isn't really in the line of debris and dirt all the time. It's not going to get that scraped and scratched. So I'm not going to be doing too much on here. Just just touches of it. Just to pick out some edges. Edges. We don't need no stinking edges, senor. Maybe around the edge of the turret hatch there. And definitely on the antenna. But that's really as much as I want to do on there. I will pick out the barrel of the bolter, the heavy bolter. But again, we'll come back and add some more specular highlights to that later. Maybe just run it around the bottom like that. And that's really quite minimal, but that's about as much as I want to do. Again, this won't be looking shiny and blingy by the time I'm finished. This will just be like a lighter grey effect. We'll always add the specific specular highlights later. So that is there. So I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that to dry for a minute. Uh, and while we're waiting, I think it's time we give some stickers away. So let me rinse these brushes off, and then I think it's stickery giveaway time. Do do. I'll have a quick look at what the uh, chat is doing. Do 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 do. Another news. Uh, my brush soap was running out. I used the master's brush soap, and it was running out. So I got myself the big one. It's not that big. I thought this was like twice as deep as that, but it's not. It's twice as deep, but half this. Like, yeah, I was like, oh, it's, oh, I thought that was going to be like this big, but that deep. I was most disappointed. Not impressed. Not impressed at all. I was like, what a swizz. Right, so I'll give these a proper good clean later on. Uh, and I shall have a quick look at the chat, and then we'll do some stickery giveaways. I think it's time for sticker giveaways. Do, 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 do. Now I do apologise for today's show. It's a bit, it's been a bit slapdash, but that's the problem when you're doing weathering. There's a lot of weathering techniques where it's like you apply the technique and then you sit there for an hour. So it's not like I can do everything all in one go, unfortunately. So I shall put that there. I shall put those there out of the way. I shall move that off there. I shall put him there to dry. I shall get ready with the stickers. Let me move this out of the way. I'll have a swig of tea. I'll have a look at the chat. Uh, I happen to have the stickers ready. I'll zoom the camera out a bit. Do, 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 do. Anti-zoom. There we go. So we have some stickers ready. Today we have a scaly model sticker, a me sticker, and a sprue crew sticker. So I'll have a quick look at the chat before we do those. Remember, if you want to have a guaranteed sticker, you can send me a question and an answer for me to use in this section. Uh, if you want to do that, just send me an email to fox at modelmakingguru.com with the question and the answer. And if I use that question and answer, then you'll get yourself a sticker. So include your name and address. If you don't include your name and address, I'll assume you don't want a sticker. Uh, quick look at the chat though. Uh, Dad's saying, uh, hang on, what we're we talking about. Uh, people want to forget about being 18. Yeah, I don't want to be 18 again. 18 would have been a great time of life, apart from it's that time of life when you start being interested in girls, but also you turn into a pizza. It's like, hey, now you've got an interest in sex, but we're going to make you unattractive to every other human being on the planet. Thanks, nature. 
yeah, that's just taking the mickey that is. Uh, Paul says, I still had hair when I was 18. Uh, when I was eight, he says, actually. Samantha Fox is 53 this year. Wow, she's five years older than me. Wow. Uh, nope, I'm sure that show has done a candy factory somewhere else. Don't know what that's talking about. Sergeant Bones is busy. Hey, Sergeant Bones, making steaks and baked potatoes. Oh, specular drink. It's a schoolfish. I guess there's a drinking game going on somewhere. Uh, let's have a quick look. People talking about jawbreakers. Well, guys, as much as this has been fun, I need to slim sleep. Been up since seven. Going to watch Thrones tonight, says Snowman. Okay, well, thanks for coming in, Snowman. You've probably already gone by now, but thank you for coming in. Much appreciated. Uh, oh, boy, stickers. Aiden Jones. Hello there. Welcome, Aiden. Uh, night, night, snow, snow, says Lynn. Uh, write twinge on a sticker because twinge is a wonderful word that was used today, says Candy. I do use the word twinge a lot, don't I? Uh, write orchid on another song because then anyone who speaks Greek will chuckle. Walter Woolmouth is off for ham and eggs. Have a great day. I don't make it back. Send my request for Boom Hut. Looking forward to you all there. Okay, so you've sent a Boom Hut request. Uh, I shall uh, do. I'll, I'll do that when the show's finished. Thank you for popping in, though, dude. Thanks for coming in. Uh, right, okay, I think we're up to date. Okay, so we're going to do some sticker giveaways. As always, at this point in the show, uh, there's always a noticeable lag between the video that you're looking at with all the eyes on your face and the chat. So before we go anywhere, what I need to do is refresh your browser and drag the slider across to the right-hand side. So you're up to date as much as possible. So drag the browser and drag the slider. So refresh and drag. So if you do that now, I'll give you a minute. Don't forget, of course, uh, I'm going to ask a question and then get the answer. And I go off whoever it is in the chat that gives the answer correct first. And remember, I see the chat differently. I see the chat in the order that YouTube receives the comments. You see the chat with your comment first because it's gone from your keyboard to your monitor. It's gone that far. For me to see it, I have to see your comment that goes all the way to YouTube. So I don't see the chat the same as you do. Your chat is tailored to you. My chat is tailored to the way they actually come in. So just so you know. So I'll get the pen of magic. We shall write twinge. I'll write orchid, and I don't know why. Orchid. And on this one, I'll write butt fumble. There you go. I don't know what that means. So twinge, orchid, and butt fumble. There you go. So we've got three stickers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question, and whoever gets the answer right first on the chat that I see over here wins a sticker. Uh, now, uh, if you want to send me a question answer, like I say, just pop it along to fox at modelmakingguru.com, the email address there. I'll just see if anybody has. I don't think I have any. Uh, but I do have a question that Dad sent in. So we'll start with the question that Dad sent in. So is everybody ready? I shall have a quick swig of the tea. So... Uh, Right, there we go. Okay. Let me just oh I can't oh, I can't look on hang on. Let me take my gloves off because I can't I can't get into my phone with the gloves on because it doesn't do my thumbprint thing. Hang on. Hang on. Right there we go. Okay, so we have a question from Dan. Is everybody ready? Is everybody ready? Where's the chat? Let me get the chat up. Okay. Everybody ready? First question. We all know and love Warhammer TV's Duncan, Tooth in Coats. We all know and love his content. He has taught us the way of Tooth in Coats, the way of getting it in between the bristles, and the way of clogging the details. So we all know good old Duncan. He's our Lord and Saviour. But who knows his surname? Go. Warhammer TV's Duncan, what's his second name? What's his surname? My hands are sticky from having them gloves on. It's a bit minging. 
Everybody is checking the Googles now. Paul says Labia Mermaids and Donuts. Donuts, Peanuts, Stark. Uh, in fact, the print guru is the right one. He's the first in with Rhodes. Yes, it is indeed. Duncan Rhodes. Duncan Rhodes like the electric piano. Oops, never seen Duncan's show, says Lynn. You need to sort that out. You need to watch Warhammer TV. Yes. Duncan Goodhue. Good God, there's a name from the past, says Paul. So yes, you're all too slow with the Googles. Your Google foo was terrible. I suspect that I suspect that um, uh, the print guru knew the answer and everybody else is Googling it. So there you go. But yes, Duncan Rhodes. Rhodes is his surname. So print guru, well done. You've won yourself and sticker. Do you want Orchid, Butt Fumble or Twinge? Which one, which one do you fancy, matey? Oh, sticky hands from wearing gloves. Ugh, it's horrible. So do you want the model making gear, the scaly models, or the sprue crew? We'll all sit quietly and wait for you to answer which one you want. In fact, nobody else got the right answer at all. I feel a twinge coming on. So that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a scaly models. So I shall put your name on the back. Print Guru. Now, if you remember, uh, you guys all know this anyway, for any new viewers, I don't send these cards out, these stickers out straight away. I have a pile from the last few weeks because I don't get to go to the post office very often. So I basically pile them up until I get a massive pile and then I just blam them all out in one go. So I've got weeks and weeks worth there to send out. So don't panic if you've won one in the last few weeks. It's still there waiting to go out. If you do win a sticker, all you need to do, once you've... I'm, I'm still a bit hot. Let me turn my volume down a bit more. Hang on. There we go. Is that a bit better? I was coming in a bit hot there, I think. Sorry about that. Um, that's probably going to be torture when I listen to it back. It'll be all clippy and horrible. I do apologise. Yeah, if you if you win a sticker, send an email to fox at modelmakingguru.com and just tell me you've won a sticker and your name and address. If you've won a sticker more than once, send me an email each time because I go in the inbox and that's my to-do list. If I see six mails from you saying you want a sticker, I know I need to send you six stickers. If they're all sent on the same day, I'm not going to send you six stickers. You just, you know, don't, 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 don't fudge the system. Uh, right, so we've got two stickers left. I have got no more questions to ask, so I don't think. Uh, let me just double check. We've done all those. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I've got a mail from Games Workshop. Great, your news order is on the way. That's kind of old and not the relevant thing. Uh, okay, so there we go. So I've got to make up questions now. So let's make up some questions. Um, I've got to think of a question now. <laughs> thinking of a question, thinking of a question. It's harder than you think because I've got to pull it out of my ass. And it's not that easy to think of something. Mm, uh, Okay, um, thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh, I can't think of a question now. Oh, I'm not going to write the. I'll, I'll, if I, I'm not going to write the number on my hand because that will be the default third question. Um, okay, uh, thinking of a question. I'm trying to think of a question now. Um, ba 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 da ba da ba do. Really can't think of a question. Oh, you know when you, oh, it's like, it's like if you think about blinking, you'll blink more often. But if you think about asking a question, you can't think of a question. Um. Okay, easy question for you. Ready? Everybody ready? I've talked about using glazed mediums before uh, with uh, paints to dilute them instead of thinning them. Instead of using water or thinners, you use glazed mediums. Uh, Vallejo do theirs, which is in interestingly called glazed medium. What's the name of Citadel's glazed medium? Go. The proper name, not my made-up name. Paul. What's the name of their glazed medium paint? Beep, 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 beep. And Rinx is straight in with Lamian Medium. Well done. Rinx, your, uh, the Angus Alec wrote something and then took it out again. Yes, Lamian Medium. Wasn't bothered about the spelling. Rinx near is first with Lamian Medium. 
Labia, Labia Mermaids. There you go. So well done, Rinks. Uh, I'll wait for you to choose between Model Making Guru or uh, Sprue Crew. So it's Butt Fumble or Orchid. Team Inep says Dancing for Lungies. Yes. Blah, 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 says Team Inept. <laughs> Dad says, don't nearly put your name then. <laughs> so Rinks, let me know which one you want. You want Butt Fumble. Rinks wants Butt Fumble. I'm not even going to make those jokes. Nice one. So send me an email, fox at modelmakingguru.com. And this said fox at dogsounds.com then. Uh, send me an email. Tell me you've won that specific sticker, and I'll get that out to you. So we have one left. We have Orchid. I still don't get this joke. I don't speak Greek, so. Uh, we've got one left. It's one of mine. Why is mine always the last one picked? It's like the fat kid in the group or something. <laughs> I don't know. So for this, we shall do the good old-fashioned writing a number on the back of my hand, because I can't think of what to do. So I'm going to write a number on the back of my hand. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to guess the number. So, is everybody ready? It is a number between 74 and 84. Go. Dad, you should know I'm never going to make it 69. <laughs> 74 and 84, print guru. Doodle 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 doodle. One million and six. Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. Uh, Sprumonger is first in. Bro, you're the first in, bro, with 77. There we go. Sprumonger, well done. You've won yourself a model making guru sticker. Yay. For some reason, whenever I think of the 1970s, I always think of 1977 as the, as the ultimate. I don't know why, but 1977 was the ultimate 70s year. I don't know why. So, Sprumunga, well done. The first ever show you've watched, and you've won yourself a sticky, so good job. Uh, just send an email, fox at modelmakingguru.com, and give me your name and address, and tell me you've won a guru sticker, and I'll get one sent out to you. So, well done, Sprumunga. Well done, bro. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I don't know why, but I, the other thing is, with as well, with 1977, I'm going to do it on a bit of paper so I can show you, but for some reason... Whenever I think of the number 1977, right, I always imagine it like this. So you've got, I always imagine the numbers where you've got like, they're made of little stripes. So they're like that and it'll be like, uh, like that. And then another one there. Another one there. I don't know why, but I always see 1977 like that. Some kind of stripey thing, but in the correct 1970s font. You can't really see that. I always see it like that. Maybe some more, a more square font, but that's how I see the number 1977. I don't know why. Maybe in blue or red. I, just, I don't know. Or maybe maybe they're all joined by a line, so it's like, it kind of goes like that. 19... So, I, it's weirdness. I'm just going into the depths of my brain now, and you don't want to go there. But yes, well done to all three of you. Send me emails, fox at modelmakingguru.com, and I will get those stickers at some point on the way to you. And like I said... I only get to the to the post office once every month or so, once every couple of months. So I am accruing up a big pile. Might take a while to get to you, but don't panic. If you've mailed me to say you want a sticker and you haven't received the sticker yet, I'll still have the email. Uh, right, let's have a quick look at the chat. The Spruemonger says, woohoo, not sarcasm. <laughs> uh, top of the Pops font. Yeah, that's probably it. Uh, I mean, let's do a quick Google search now for 1977. Just have a look for it. I'm going to do a Google search for 1977. I'm going to do an image search. And I bet you, somewhere. No. No. Oh, yes, yes. I did a go do a Google image search for 1977. And within the first 10, 20 results, there will be the number 1977 written out like that. See, I told you. It's just, that's, I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but that is the way that 1977 should be written. See, 1976 wasn't the 1970s, and 1978 wasn't the 1970s, but 1977 was the 1970s. I don't know why. Uh, Candy Graham says it's a, mo it's a scientific fact that having a sticker will give you plus one in model building. It certainly will. Also, it'll give you plus one in attracting hot chicks. 
or chickesses or not chicks, whichever you prefer. Chicks or blokes, whichever you prefer. Uh, because the Adidas football shirt numbers were like that, says Paul at TV Depth. True, but I don't do football. Uh, Skullfish, Skullfish says, yes, for silly top of the pops. Neon sign 1977. Yes, so I don't, I don't know why, but yeah, 1977 is, it's, it is the 1970s year. So what I'm going to do, that's, the metallic's been done. What I want to do now, like I say, if I wasn't using this as playable on the tabletop, I would do things like powders and pigments. I'm not going to do that. I might use some Tamir weathering powders, because once they're, once they're matte varnished on there, they're fixed forever. If I start using powders like the Ammo Meg powders... They're just going to come off eventually. As I'm playing it on the table and it's been handled and people are picking it up and it's like, it's just going to, it's going to kill it. So there's no point me going all the display queen level of powders and pigments. What I'm going to do though is for dust and dirt, I'm going to do just some dry brushing. Uh, and we've got a selection of colours. Uh, I've got Talon Sand, I've got Steel Legion Drab, and I've got Zandri Dust. And Steel Legion Drab is a brilliant earth tone for dry brushing, but I don't want it to be all that stuff. So what I want to do is, first of all, start off with a lighter colour. Uh, we'll start off with some Zandri Dust, I think. And this is all going to be dry brushing. Can't, so uh, so I'm one because I do, I'm minus one because I don't have a sticker says Lynn, and uh, Dad says you've had tons Lynn, <laughs> you've got stickers Lynn you've had loads of stickers, right so I need a big fat uh, dry brushing brush. Now I'm not going to be delicate with this because we're doing the whole thing. I don't need a small brush. I'll probably use a small brush as well. Uh, or do I, oh, and again, do I, um, maybe I do actually, I don't want to get too grainy with this, so let me just, I'm quite picky when it comes to my brushes, you see, when it comes to dry brushing, we'll go for this one, go for this one, see how this one works, so, we're going to start off with Zandri Dust, now, when I, for most of my models, I when I base them, I use a ghrelin earth. So this kind of dust colours and dirt colours will be absolutely fine for matching with a ghrelin earth. Which is kind of a, steel lead and drab is kind of a ghrelin earth coloured. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start dry brushing in circular motions. want to keep it circular. And what I want to suggest here, oh, let me zoom in a bit for you, hang on. And hopefully I get a chance to do this during the show, but Oops. what I'm going to try and suggest here is that we have a, a, a gradation from lighter dried out mud, nothing on there at all, from lighter dried out mud all the way to like fresh earth that's a darker colour. I don't just want to do one colour. So we'll get most of that off on the tissue. What I'm going to do is just start working it in. Am I on camera? Yes, I'm on camera. Now I don't want to make it completely obscure everything because that will be a bit rubbish. And I haven't painted these things yet. So I may have to come back and do them later. I want to start building up a dusty, dirty layer. And this may take some time. Now, ideally, I would have actually finished painting the gold details and the, you know, the scroll work on the skull and stuff. But I can always come back and add that later if I need to. It's not a big thing. It might end up being completely covered by earth weathering, so it doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do... Now I'm being careful around the decals because if you remember none of these are varnished, there's no protection on here yet. But I'm just building up slowly. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. And I don't want to completely repaint everything. Uh, the reason I'm doing circular motions, if you've watched my stuff before you'll know, the reason I'm doing circular motions is because my intention here is not just to pick out the edges. If I just went like that, back and forth, 
I'd just be hitting the edges. I want this to build up everywhere in the recesses, on the edges, and I want to have a fade from from the undirty to dirty. I want to make it look like I've airbrushed it basically. And by doing circular motions, what I'm doing is blending all the brush strokes. And I've said this before, but I like, I'll explain it because, you know, sometimes people are watching who haven't seen this before. When I was younger, I used to do lots of drawings with ink. I like, like cartoon art. I do pen and ink drawings and then colour them with watercolours. But before I used watercolours, I'd use pencil crayons. And I, it took me a long time, but I learned how to do subtle, smooth shading with pencil crayons. And what you did was, instead of just colouring like this with straight lines, which just leaves you with a load of straight lines you coloured it in circles and it's the same thing about sanding, you're sanding you go in all different directions because if you go in circles I make a brush stroke and then another brush stroke covers that up from a different direction and what you end up with is no real obvious brush strokes but you can build up wonderful fades and shades by doing that So I'm focusing now towards the bottom a bit more. Now this is Andrew, was it Andrew Dust? Uh, this is a nice kind of deserty, dusty colour. You could go a bit lighter if you wanted to, but it's a nice, if you're doing, say, desert vehicle camouflage scheme or something like you could use this as your dusty weathering colour. Underdog painting is in. Hey, guys, welcome, Underdog. You've missed all the sticker giveaways, dude. Uh, got to go. Thank you for the advice and the sticker says Rinks. Thanks for coming as always Rinks. You're always more than welcome. Uh, let's have a look. So. There we go. Now I could just leave this as this particular colour. It'd be quite nice. It's quite a nice colour. Yeah, I'm going to have to repaint that scroll work, but that's fine. But I want a darker colour as well. I want to blend it. I like to blend it. Bl no, never mind. Now it does mean, of course, the thing you have to prepare when you're doing any kind of weathering like this, you have to you have to man up and accept the fact that you're going to be covering up a lot of your hard work. I'm just going to focus on this one side for you today. I'm not going to do all of it because obviously it's going to take me a while. I'm going to have to do all the sides and back and everything, but I'll just focus on this one this one side. You are going to cover up a lot of your hard work. And remember when I was doing the chipping and I said to you that I thought maybe, you know, maybe it looks like I've gone a bit too far and I've done a bit too much. And oh no, there's chipping everywhere. But then I said a few times, don't panic because you've got lots of weathering to come and that will blend everything together and hide a lot of stuff. And this is how it does it. OK, so that's there. So that's looking pretty dusty now. And you can see it fades from the from the base, from the sort of dusty colour all the way up to here where there's not much dust at all. I'm going to do one last bit. Because we've used the circular motions, and I can't, really can't stress this enough, circular motions help you do this fading. I'm, putting, I'm not putting any pressure on. I'm using real light. I'm just almost not touching the surface. I'm really hardly touching it at all. But if I focus down here now... Now, I do find that doing this, uh, as, again, for the smooth surface, I do find doing it directly over the paint helps blend colours. Rather than doing it over a surface that's been varnished, either gloss varnished or matte varnished, this seems to work better. Okay, so we've got, we've got the fade now from the light, which it looks like sort of dried mud up to the top. And what I'll do is, I'll do the same on the other side, and around the back here we'll have a blend from the, dark, the dried mud here, and not much at the top. Because what I'm going to try and suggest is you've got mud and splashes going up the side and on the back and front. On the front, obviously, that's going to have a lot of it down here. I'm not going to really do too much underneath, because you're never going to see that, but I'll give it a bit of a go. Um, but that's the first step. So that's the first step. So let me rinse off that brush. Do, 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 do. Uh, and what we'll do is the next step. Now, the other ways to do this, what I'm trying to do here is with dry brushing, what you would normally do with either pigments or powders, or you might do with airbrushing, or you might do with enamel weathering products that you've then put on and then washed away with a, 
with a thinner of some sort. Let me give this brush a... Now here's a trick with dry brushing. If you need to swap colours quickly, I'm going to take this brush, I'm going to hair dryer it. One second. There you go. You never want to dry brush with a wet brush, <laughs> obviously, because it's dry brushing. But you can just get it under the hairdryer and do that for a minute. And that's now ready for the next colour. So the next colour, that was Zandri Dust. Uh, we're now going to go with... We could do three or four colours, but that is quite a nice earthy tone. So what I'm going to do next is go straight to Steel Legion Drab. And what I'm going to suggest here... I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the tracks yet, but what I'm going to suggest here is if I can get it open, is that what we've just dried on is, or what we've just put on is dried earth. It's, it's dried out, it's got on the side, then it's dried away. What I'm going to suggest here now is another layer of dirt and dust, but this perhaps is a little fresher. It's not quite dried out yet. And it just gives, there's nothing on that brush at all. There's nothing on that brush whatsoever. Brilliant, fantastic. Well done, Fox. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, let's try that again. Ooh. Give the paint a shake. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Try that again. Just getting it off on the... I'm not showing that. I'm just getting the paint off on the tissue, obviously. What we're going to do here is we're just going to do now another dry brush layer. And this is even less pressure than before. I'm not really pressing down at all. I'm going to work this into the base here, but I'm going to do this really just towards the bottom. Now, if you remember when we did glazes, and I was saying about building up glaze and layers of colour, well, this is the same thing again. Well, it's being a challenge because it's not that much different to the Zandri dust, but it's, it's different. It's building up slowly. Always stick with the circular motions. And we're just going to slowly build it up. And this is just going to suggest a change between the dark brown earth and the light brown earth. And the reality of this is, you know, you could have, you could, I could have saved myself a lot of time and not, just not put any effort into doing paint chipping and stuff down the bottom of this side here, this track guards, because a lot of it's disappearing and you're not seeing it. But the reality is, even though you're covering up a lot of this with the weathering, there's still the odd bit where it shines through and you can see a chip or a streak or something else showing through. And you can still see it. And you know it's there. So although, you, you know, you, you can save yourself time by not going to all the effort of just putting all the details down on these bottom bits. Sometimes it's good too because it's the happy accidents. If you just left that as green paint and then put this on, there's little patches where it shows through. And that's half of the beauty of making models is all the unintentional accidental stuff that just looks great. Okay, so that's on there. I will take time to get it on the underside here as well. I just haven't done that yet. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the tracks yet. So now we have, and I, the colours don't really come out on camera too much, um, but it goes from a dry earth to a dark earth. And what I'm going to do now is get even more funky. Uh, get another dry brush. I'll do, actually, I'll do one more coat of the Steel Legion Drabs. Steel Legion Drab. Steel Legion Drab is a fantastic dirt colour. If you've got like figures with a cloak, like say you've got some Space Marine snipers, or you've got some Imperial Guard dudes with the cloaks and stuff, or anything like that, if you've got guys with cloaks, then just dry brushing this on the bottom of the cloak or the great coat a little bit just gives it a slightly dirty weathered look, and it looks fantastic. If you've got, say, you know, uh, Steel Legion, strangely enough, or if you've got some death call anybody with long great coats or anything like that just give a little brush of a steel legion drab at the bottom of the great coat and it just gives it a slight dirty dusty look uh visali says in warhammer are you allowed to customize your models or have they got to be a standard sorry just naive uh, no you can do uh, basically if you um 
it depends where you play. If you're just playing with friends, then you can kind of do whatever you want. There are people that will... They'll use, say, for example, Death Corps of Krieg, who are a kind of a cross between World War One and World War Two German and French soldiers. And they have a load of tanks that you get through Forge World, but they're expensive. What some people do is they'll take, like, 135th Panzer IV tanks, but they'll paint them up to look like something of the Death Corps, and they'll use them. But, basically, you can use custom-done stuff, but... To see, if you're playing with friends, it doesn't really matter what you put on the tabletop. But, for example, if I if I took a 135th Panzer IV, I could put it on the table and I could say, that's a substitute for a Chimera or whatever the actual Games Workshop tank was. And it would still have to behave in the gameplay. I can't just suddenly... I can't take a gun that this tank wouldn't have and put it on the front and say, there you go, it's, it's a tank but with the weapon off an Imperial Knight. That kind of doesn't work. But you can do substitution as long as you declare what it's a substitute for. Uh, and you get a lot of people with like you know custom built stuff as long as they play according to the rules. So if I've got you know if I've got a load of you know uh, I don't know non games workshop infantrymen for my for my army, but because there are third party companies, but I declare that they play as normal third party infantrymen, then yeah that'd be fine. That'd be fine. If you go to a war, if you go to like an official tournament, then no, they have to be correct and official. You can't do that. Uh, if you go to your local Warhammer store, most of them will be cool with it. They'd be fine with it. As long as you're buying stuff from them, they don't really care. But you couldn't rook up with a load of, you know, plastic army men. So that's my Imperial Guard in an inner games workshop store. Yeah, <laughs> They'd be like, really? Okay, I'm going to go in with some Screaming Skull, which you may not think of as a dirt colour. But this is just to go over the top. And this is very light dry brush now. Just to go over the very top area. And this is to give us the very lightest dust. So if you imagine the dust down at the bottom here is the fresh mud and dirt. The middle tone we use, the Zandri dust, was like the sort of the reasonably dried mud. And this stuff now will be the really dried mud. And we're just going to fade it a little bit down. And we're going to maybe run it over the tops. This might be the dust and sand that's perhaps caught on some edges. Maybe. Make up the story in your mind. If it works in your mind, then you go. So there we go. And we can we can blend that down a little bit just to make it blend. Will it blend? So you get this nice shade now between the two. Now what I might do is rinse that off. In fact, now what I'll do, I'm not going to rinse it off. I'm going to come back in with the Zandri dust. Because I can mix and match, and you can vary things around. If you think you've gone too far with the white one, like the light colour, like I have there a little bit, I can just come back in and put some more of the Zandri dust in there, just to balance it out. And make the fade a bit more obvious. A bit more, I think. Oops. Uh, Vasily says, I understand the same game values. Yeah, so basically, if you know, it might be that as long as you declare at the start of the game this thing on the tabletop now, which is not whatever it's supposed to be, is going to behave exactly as this thing. So, for example, you might have a load of like Imperial Guard and they've all got LAS guns. But you might say, I'm going to play these guys like they've all got hot shot volley guns. But I just don't have 10 guys with hot shot volley guns, so it's a substitute. So these 10 guys, we'll agree to pretend that they've all got hot shot volley guns. And if, you're, if, you're partners, if your opponent's happy with that, then you, you're fine then. But if you're in like a, say an official Warhammer tournament or something like that, you couldn't do that. They'd be like, no. And especially if it, if, if it was like stuff that was non... You couldn't go to, say, a Warhammer tournament and play something on the table that wasn't actually sold by Warhammer. That's when you couldn't, you know, plonk a Tamiya 135th Panzer IV and say, Death Cora Krieg, Machinarius Patent Tank. They'd be like, bye, out you go. <laughs> you couldn't get away with that. So there we go. We've got a nice bit of variation there. I'm going to do one last colour now. 
And for that, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide, which is a real dark brown, real dark brown. Dark brown for them times when you need a dark brown colour. <coughs> Ooh, hello. Uh, for this, you can see it's a real dark, muddy colour. And for this, we're just going to go, it's got a bit of a red tone to it. But for this, we're going to do just the real bottom stuff here. You were get more of that off on the brush and for this we're just going to stick right to the, the lower area here and we're just going to I suppose accentuate highlight isn't really the word but we're going to put a real dark layer of dirt and dust here so this is now going to be a mud color which is heavy and wet and it's just maybe at the bottom down here it just catches and then what we'll have is, this will probably be like most of the stuff on the tracks will be this dark brown colour. Because what, in my mind, in my head canon, what you've got is the whole side gets covered in dust and dirt and mud. Over time, this stuff dries out. But right at the bottom here, where you've got, it's going through puddles and, sh and shallow water, it might constantly be refreshing the mud. On the tracks, of course, they're constantly in contact with the ground. So they're constantly churning up mud. So they're going to be covered in mud. They don't really dry out. Up here, of course, it might not get wet all that often so down here it'll always be wet down there it won't be so the fresh earth regardless will always be at the bottom and at the top you want either nothing or the dried dried off dust and earth and there we go that is the kind of effect i'm going to do now i know i can say it doesn't really come out let me see if we're going to adjust the color a bit for you hang on see if we can make this look a bit better uh one moment do 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 can I adjust this at all to look more realistic uh, without breaking everything? <laughs> nope, that's far too orange. Oh well, I was about as close as I can get. You get the idea anyway. I think that's about right. You get the idea. We just close that down again. <laughs> there we go. So you get the idea. We've just got that kind of dusty earth look. So I'm, I'm going to go around now and do the rest of that all around the rest of the vehicle. Uh, and as it's only quarter past five, I guess I'll do that now. I was going to sort of do that and then be finished then, but we've got still got 45 minutes to go yet. So let me clean that brush off. I'm just going to go and change my water as well because my water's kind of yellow. Give me one second. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well that's that's quite dirty and dusty. How dirty do you want to make your, your vehicle? Uh, and with weathering, it's entirely up to you. You make up the story behind whatever you're working on. You tell the story. I'm going to zoom the camera back out again. It'll be quite so close now. Uh, you tell the story of your model. Uh, from my point of view, I think this has been in many battlefields. Go and look at a real tank. Real tanks stay clean for about five minutes once they get out of the parade ground. You know, once they get out of the, the uh, base, they're in dirt and dust and mud constantly. They weigh a billion tons and they churn up dirt and dust. So a tank stays clean for about five seconds. These Imperial vehicles, if you know your Warhammer lore, uh, these things can be... A year old, five years old, a hundred years old. These things can be anywhere from five minutes old to decades to hundreds of years. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be dirty and dusty. I like to make sure it's dirty and dusty. And you've got a several many ton thing going through puddles and lakes and things. It's going to splash dirt up. It's going to look dirty and dusty. But that's in my head. That's my head cannon. You can make it look however you want. Oh. But if you want to do some nice, simple earthing, earthing? It's not even a word. If you want to do some nice, simple weathering, but you're going to play it on the tabletop, I recommend this kind of dry brushing. Powders and pastels will do the same thing. They will absolutely, to me, a weathering pastel will have that, so you can do the same thing. And they'll probably be fine. But dry brushing is really easy. 
it's not a problem but i wouldn't recommend pigments like uh, uh you know the ammo by mig weathering pigments or ak interactive pigments purely because they'll look fantastic but you need to be handling this all the time and even with a coat of varnish pigments will come away you'll just end up rubbing them off so i don't recommend using pigments for stuff you're going to play on the tabletop i recommend dry brushing it as much as you can this will get protective varnish at the end but i would recommend it right so uh i need to keep this closer we got didn't use that one so we've got screaming skull rhinox hide xandradath and steel legion traps i can put that one away so i've got my colors ready laid out there uh so have a quick look at the chat what's chat been doing uh, uh do, 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 do. people are talking about football uh, i know nothing about football I have no interest in such things uh Spreemonger says pencil cranes fox you are the first person i've heard say that besides my parents vietnam style childhood flashbacks <laughs> yeah pencil cranes i used to have a huge selection of rodella rowney pencil cranes and and all different um who else did i have uh there's dale rowney i had loads of theirs i had some windsor and newton loads of those big tins of them and i'll tell you i perfected the art of coloring in leather effects leather things in pencil cranes i had all the perfect colors laid out yeah but yeah pencil cranes are great i used before i before i got into doing like ink drawings and then coloring the watercolors like you do for a proper comic strip i was using pencil cranes uh but it looks really cool i'll try work i i'll start again looks really cool i'll try working this technique on my neat on my new orc army yes yeah, it's, it's a nice it's a nice weather and effect it's just it's just going from wet from mud to dust really that's the basic the way of doing it um, you can do it on figures again. You perfectly fine on figures. If you had a figure, you might do this brown, dark brown to light brown effect, say from the bottom of the foot to halfway up the knee or something like that. You can do the same thing. If you've got a long flowy coat, do a bit of that on the bottom of the coat. If it's a small figure, you might just want to do, say, just Steel Legion Drab and then a little touch of the Rhinox hide at the bottom. But you really can vary and mix it up. But if you use more colours, you get more of a step change between those two. Now, I didn't paint that scroll work, but to be honest, I kind of don't need to now because you can just make the assumption it's covered in dust and mud and that's why it just looks the same color as the dust and mud same with the eagle the aquila there it's kind of just dust colored so i've kind of saved myself the job of having to paint all that you do lose all this chipping but the most convincing weathering you can do the most convincing chipping is the chipping that's almost invisible because it's covered up by everything else when you're making and doing weathering and making a model you can't afford to be too precious with any one particular step of the way like i said you know I spent a long time doing all the chipping on this and fussing over it but at the end of the day i know half of it's going to disappear and that's the trick if you want to have convincing believable weathering and used look you have to accept that you might paint something now and it'll look the best thing ever but it's going to get covered up uh, and always with any build i do i'll get to a point say halfway through i think this looks fantastic i don't want to change it now and then you know you have to because like before i had the paint chipping on it looked great but i knew i had to cover up all the shading i'd done with chipping and with weathering so it just adds it's all layers it's all layers and depth and you know what you've done uh what's your belly getting today paul because uh, paul says it's time for it's time for lunch pb and j sandwich cheese string pepperettes bag of chips and iced tea oh that's a real that's a real school dinner that is <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwich cheese strings pepperettes Bag of chips and iced tea. Bag of chips, by the way, he means crisps. He's not in the UK, so just so everybody knows. Oh, sounds good, actually. Need a bit of Vidal Sassoon on that brush. Just wash and go, says Earl D. Oh, yeah. It needs to be soft. And... I tell you what, though. If you want to get some good brushes for things like dry brushing, Dale Rowney graduates. They're not cheap. They are not cheap, but they're really good brushes. Some of my favourite dry brushes, like these for metallics. I use some of these for metallics. Our daily roundy graduates shaders they are fantastic there's number four shader i've got a what's another one there's one i use for metallics all the time i think it's this one i've had this brush so long it, let me, it looks battered but i've had this brush so long it's got to me a chrome silver jammed into the ferrule there that's and i haven't used chrome silver for about three years i've had this brush for years and i don't mind 
that the paint's gone into the ferrule because that makes the ferrule really stiff but the end is still flexible and that means I can get some really smooth fades on that some shadings so yeah De La Rowney graduate brushes are really good some of the shader brushes are really good for dry brushing and they're wash brushes they're proper artist brushes you, you have to go to a proper art shop they're not cheap but they're brilliant this one's last me years and the trick is with dry brushing have some brushes for dry brushing but just use them for dry brushing and don't worry about them you clean them like you normally would with your soap your brush soap and stuff but don't be too anal with them if they get paint in the ferrule not a problem they use for dry brushing dry brushing is harsh on brushes so don't worry but do have some set aside the, the the games workshop ones are quite good the dry brushing ones are quite good but they are quite rough that's what i've been using here but they are quite rough for metallics if you want like nice smooth metallic shading effects the daily round graduates are brilliant i say not cheap not cheap uh chat says i should eat eventually says jonathan t you probably best Oh, hello. Uh, sound like Fox is having a wee wee. Haha. -ha. Oh, that was when I was re refilling my water thing. I feel like eating lunch now, but it's 10.22 New Mexico time and I just ate breakfast. Well, then it's just a pre-lunch post-breakfast snack. It's brunch. Uh, Got to go. Food should be back. If not, I should be increasing the stream later, says Jamie Bone. Okay, thanks for coming in, Jamie. We'll be here for another half an hour. But if we don't see you, I'll probably see you in Chris's chat later on. Which reminds me, Chris, for some reason, isn't here right now. It usually pops in. But Chris, over at Gross Models, I finish my stream around about 6 o'clock. Uh, you all go and have your tea. And then Chris does his Warhamster stream at 8 p.m. BST. I'm assuming he's doing one tonight. I'm guessing he is. But he does his little hour and a half Warhamster uh, stream at half eight, at 8 o'clock tonight so 8 p.m bst whatever that is your time uh, he'll be doing that later on so do go along and join in uh, he's working on his i think he's still working on his torox prime he's doing a bright orange torox prime which is brilliant uh, will you be doing another elite dangerous live stream asks aiden jones yes i will do um although i have to admit i've kind of got very disillusioned with streaming games because i don't have any kind of capture card um at the minute playing on my xbox i don't have any kind of capture card because they're very expensive i can't afford them and every time i read up on one it says it's brilliant apart from all these problems you have with it and nobody's convinced me of a capture card to get that's flawless and simple to use although the one chris has got is quite good uh, and i don't do game streaming that often but it's a catch-22 i'd like to do more game streaming but at the moment what i have to do is use the xbox app on my pc on my desktop pc and i play it on the xbox it streams it to the xbox app it looks fantastic on the xbox app on my telly and then what i do is i then stream that from the xbox app that goes through my streaming software that i'm using now Streamlabs, up to the youtubes it looks fantastic on my xbox it looks fantastic on the xbox app it looks fantastic in obs but the moment it gets streamed out to youtube the xbox app mangles it and makes it look ass uh, actually no, i got that wrong it looks fantastic on my xbox it looks fantastic on it looks it, basically the xbox app on desktop is terrible for fast movement so it looks fantastic sometimes but then if i move quickly everything goes blocky and it's horrible so every time i do it i'm like oh it looks terrible but unless i go out buy a, a game a, a capture card i've got an option i'm gonna have to use the xbox app so i, I, I might do more it i did get put off though because the quality was terrible I did, nobody's gonna sit and watch me play elite dangerous for four hours with you know five pixels per square foot but i'll, I'll do more i do i do play it i don't get a lot of time to go on the xbox at the minute but when i'm doing elite dangerous i'm just sitting there trawling between the stars so it is nice that the few times i've done it has been nice to hang out with you guys and just chat so yes i'll do more i'll do more i did start doing the halo trilogy but the quality from this xbox streaming thing is just not there and it's just i can't you can't watch a first person shooter stream through the xbox app to obs it just looks like absolute gash i thought for a long time it was my stream labs streaming software causing the problem it's not it's the xbox app it's just awful it's horrible it's just not good so anyway yes yeah, so I'll, do, I'll do more elite streams uh, uh, at the minute i'm still in the middle of nowhere going from star to star so it won't be exciting in any way shape or form i've got something on my glasses and i can't i can't see it but i can see it uh Spoonmonger says good night all the vampire budgie swarms will be out soon so i need to go and lock down the house it's been emotional thanks for coming Spoonmonger. really enjoyed having you here don't forget to mail me for your sticker and i hope you come to this one again every sunday 
3 p.m. BST uh, for this nonsense. But yeah, really nice to have you along. First, if it comes to his first show, win some stuff. Awesome. I say his, it could be her. I don't know. Uh, Vasily says, Home Bargains do a big brush set for four quid and three decent brushes. Uh, sorry, and their decent brushes. I even use tube paints for, to airbrush. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to spend a fortune on brushes. Let's be honest. I've got, I've got a load of Games Workshop brushes and I've got a load of non-Games Workshop brushes. You don't need to spend a fortune on brushes. All my brushes are, I've basically got a load of Games Workshop ones, which are fine, but don't last very long. Uh, a load of artists' brushes from the art store, uh, which cost me a fortune. And I've got everything from little tiny point detail things to things like that. That brush, in fact, no, not that one. Let me show you the one. Let me show you this one. This brush. No, in fact, not that one. Wait, let me, this brush, this one, there we go. This brush is the Dale Rowney Bright System 3 10 brush. This brush was 30 quid. If I remember right, that was about 30 quid for that brush. But it's a really nice brush. That's proper artist brushes. And I just I had them anyway. A lot of the artist brushes I happen to have because I did a lot of art. So, but I've got a big collection of those. I've got my Games Workshop brushes, which are fine. I do like their their fine layer brushes and their um, their uh, artificer brushes. They are quite nice. They're nice to paint with. They're good finders, but they don't last long. Even if you look after it with your brush set, they don't last long at all. So you tend to buy them a lot. Uh, and I've got my Army Painter sets of brushes as well in various states of disrepair. Um, I do recommend the Army Painter brushes. They're really nice. Get the Mega Brush set. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean the Games Workshop ones, if you've got, the, the advantage for me is the Games Workshop store is 10 minutes away by car. I can get in the car, be there in 10 minutes, get some new brushes. So a lot of times it's faster for me just to pick up the, the Games Workshop stuff. Uh, don't forget, of course, it's advert pimping time. Don't forget, of course, I need to adjust that. Hang on, everything's looking a bit bright there. Let me just adjust the, oh dear. That's gone a bit wrong, isn't it? There we go. Don't forget, of course, if you are looking at picking up some brushes and bits and bobs and stuff like that, and you want to help support this channel, you can do. I do have an Amazon store. It's in the description of most of my videos. If you go to the description below this stream or in most videos, there's a link to my Amazon store and to some of the products in there. There's a whole range of stuff in there, brushes, paints, glues, tools, all the kind of thing you need. If you're looking at picking up some stuff before you go on Amazon and order it uh, willy nilly, have a quick look on my Amazon store. Uh, it might be something I've got listed there. And if it is, if you order it through there, through that link on my Amazon store, you don't cost, doesn't cost you any more, but I make a little tiny bit of income on that little bit of commission. So if you need to pick stuff up, just pop into my store and have a look and just see if there's, that thing is there. You can order it through there. And if say, if you do, you're helping this channel because it only made a little tiny bit of, bit of snatch. Uh, scratch even, that's the wrong word. Scratch even, a little tiny bit of scratch in my pocket. Uh, and that really helps me out. But yeah, uh, army painter brushes are brilliant anyway. Do, 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 do. Uh, the range is an out-of-town store chain sells Dale Rowney graduate brushes. I was surprised too. Yeah, they are nice brushes. Those graduate brushes. Uh, Twitch might do a better stream quality than YouTube. Says Asda. It's not. It's not a YouTube issue. Uh, Twitch is. Twitch quality is terrible. There's, there's two reasons I don't use Twitch. I did have Twitch set up, but two reasons. One, um, it's terrible quality. Two, I don't understand half of it bits and the people and the stuff how the chat I, I don't understand half how twitch works and three that's not two reasons but three youtube's monetized and twitch isn't for me youtube's monetized and i need that income this, if you remember i'm doing this for my living so i need the income from youtube i can't afford to do twitch because i don't make any money off that so yeah to uh, twitch i tried twitch didn't it's just more hassle than it's worth you can do it straight from the xbox which is convenient but the quality was just as bad so uh, -do 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 -do. Lynn Dipple is saving up for the army painter brushes. Would love to help you out, but shipping to USA. Yes, if you use my Amazon store, it is UK only, sadly. I can't. Uh, Amazon stores are great, but you can only have it within the country that you're in. So I'm in the UK. It's only UK orders. So there you go. Uh, Quantum Man says, I got my phaser airbrush via your Amazon. Thank you very much, dude. If there's stuff you want to order on Amazon, it's not in my store, by the way, but you do want to help me out, just drop me a quick note and say, hey, dude, can you add this to your store? If you're in the UK, drop me a quick note, ask me if I can add it, and I, I will be able to. Somebody asked me if I can add the guy notes paint, so I did. There you go. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Dad says, where have you been? Still running the marathon. Oh, to Chris. Oh, he says, oh, has it started yet? Hey, Chris. He's been out today and playing Xbox a little. Yes. 
trust him to come in at 10 minutes towards the end. Uh, we've done some weathering today, Chris. I've done some dustiness. Look, dustiness. Uh, so there's no point me starting now because we've only got like 10 or 15 minutes anyway. Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh, swig tea. So, yeah, don't forget Chris's show tonight. Are, are you doing a show tonight, Chris? I'm assuming you are um, doing a show. If you don't know what Chris's channel is, Chris on the click on the little th or right click on the little three dots on his comment. Go to one of his comments in the chat. Right click on the little three dot menu and go to channel. It'll take you to his channel. Remember to subscribe as well. Uh, right, I think I think what we'll do is we'll we'll probably start rounding up now, wrapping up now, because we're kind of almost there. I've got nothing else I can do now that's not going to take ten minutes. Um, as always, don't forget, like I say, if you want to help support this channel, aside from the the uh, the Amazon store. Uh, you can do. You're more than welcome to. There's multiple ways. You can, if you want to. I'm going to show you that so you can look at my nice dusty bits. Look at my dusty bits. There you go. <laughs> uh, yes, if you want to, you can help out this support. This Start again. You can help out this channel bigly, because this is my living. You can help me and this channel out bigly by becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon.com forward slash model making guru. Anything from a dollar a month upwards, whatever, however little or much you want to help support me with, you can do. There are certain benefits to being a Patreon supporter. Uh, I will be starting, here's an advance notice for you, on Saturday I'm going to run a live stream because I'm going to make a start on the Master Grade Sazabi Vercar. Uh, now it's going to be a Patreon exclusive build, so patrons, only patrons will be able to see the, the weekly, or not the weekly, but I'll do an event words i'll be doing a build series i'm having trouble talking today i'll be doing a build series like i normally do but they'll be patreon exclusive uh non-patrons will still get a little sort of 10 minute video build diary every every now and then but the stream on saturday will be open to everybody and it's just gonna be me dean dubbing and taking things off the sprues but once that's done once we start the actual building and painting that's gonna be patron only so if you're wanting to watch that make sure you're a supporter on the patrons the patreons um you can also if you want to uh, if you if you don't want to help me support that way, you can if you want to. Just make sure that whenever you watch one of my videos, you just watch the advert. Let the advert go all the way through, and then watch the video. It's thirty seconds of your life. It's not a big ask, uh, and that helps me out massively because that gives me a little income and revenue off the advert. And last of all, like I always say, you can go to the Amazon store that's in the links in the description below. But other than that, just like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, so what is coming up? Uh, coming up in the future this week. Here is the plan for this week. Uh, like I say, Saturday will be the Sazabi live stream. I've not set it up yet, but that'll be a Sazabi live stream. I'm probably going to start around about midday and I'm going to go for as long as I can. I'm doing it on Saturday because that's the day I'll probably get most to be able to watch. I could do it during the week, but you'll all be at work. I want to start at around about midday. You'll all be at work in the UK in most places and then it's not going to work for anybody. So if I do it on a Saturday, at least I can probably get throughout the course of the day most people. I might go till, say, dinner time and then carry on again in the evening. I might do it an all-day job. There's a lot of pieces for me to clean up and denub. But that'll be on Saturday. Uh, what I'm going to do during the week, though, is I need to catch up on my Warhammer Conquest stuff. So I'm going to be doing a lot of filming this week on Warhammer Conquest. So expect one, maybe two videos throughout the course of this week for Warhammer Conquest. Unlike my other videos, they don't go into Patreon Early Access. They just go straight to YouTube for everybody to watch. Um, and they're also massively delayed, so I need to get them out. So we've got the uh, issue 16 I've got to start filming, which is painting the uh, Intercessors, the Hellblasters, and the Inceptor, and that's going to be following the magazine. Then we've got issue six, uh, 17, 18, and I think 19. It might be 16, 17, 18. We've got to paint those five guys. I've got to get the red. We've got some Mephiston red and some Administratum Grey. I need to put them on all the ones we've painted and built so far. And I'm also going to do a video of painting the storage, the shipping crates, and doing a proper paint job on those. So much of this week is going to be spent painting Warhammer shipping crates. Properly with the chipping and the rusting and everything. So there you go. So keep an eye out for a couple of videos this week on that. And then Saturday is going to be the live stream for the Sazabi. Uh, and then Sunday be more Warhammer. I might actually do some, some elite streaming during the week if I get time. I've got a lot of filming to do this week, so I might not get a chance. But keep your eyes peeled. Uh, Lynn Dipple says, working. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing, Lynn. I'm going to start at about midday my time. I'm going to go till about 6pm. Uh, then I'm going to stop for dinner. And then about 7 or 8pm, I'll probably come back and carry on. So it's going to be... I might do it almost 12 hours with a couple of hours out for lunch and dinner and stuff so it might be a good 
six hour stream and a four hour stream so I'm, there'll be chance at some point don't worry all i'm going to be doing is snipping bits off spruce and standing them it's not gonna be exciting mephiston red says dad yes dad likes his red uh bullfwin welcome bullfwin hello 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 says this project is looking really nice thank you very much i've got i've only done that bit i've got all them yet <laughs> thank you very much uh if you want to know how i did that just go back with this, what i've done today is i've added just in case you've only just come in uh today so far i've added uh four glaze layers for rust effects just for a rusty wash and it was a water-based shade wash i used i made a sh uh, ooh, hello i made a water-based wash out of cassandra yellow and fuegan orange just to get some rust effects and then i dry brushed on some dirt and i used uh rhinox hide steel legion drab screaming skull and zandri dust so if you want to see how that was done once the show's finished, just scrub back a bit. The last hour or so I've been doing that, so that you can go and have a look. I'll zoom in a bit. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see. Hang on. Hey, a bit better. It does look a bit darker in real life. On the stream it looks a bit bright, but it's a bit dark in real life. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, but yes, welcome for coming in. Welcome for coming in. Thank you for coming in. I'm afraid we're right near the end, but do go back and watch the rest. Uh, I do apologise again. As I say, I've just noticed I'm it's still doing. I'm having some real microphone issues lately. For some reason, adjust it again. For some reason, I normally have my volume on the microphone set at a certain level, and for some reason lately, it's been very loud. Even the normal level has been. So it, I keep noticing the audio is clipping and getting too loud. So I do apologise if it sounded terrible today. I must apologise. I don't know what's going on with it. It's very strange. Uh, let's have a look. Do, do, do. I might be able to make it, says Lynn. Yay! Zadsta says Betty's Hot Pot. Yes! I can't remember which colour that is now. <laughs> I'll definitely go back and watch it for sure, says Bullfin. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's dead simple. It's just dry brushing and just those four colours. And it's dead dead straightforward. And it means I don't have to paint that bit now. I was trying to... Because I, I would have had to paint that little sort of banner there and write you know whatever on the side of it like xeon because I, I can't write i can't do the fancy writing on things with the brush so i can just say it's covered in dirt now and i have to paint it Woo you must be excited and shouting says chris at gross models i am, I am. now i tell you what though i've got to be honest with you i'm struggling a bit for these sunday shows because once we've done this obviously as you know i'm working on my army i've got a Lehman Rust to do, and I've got a Hydra. Now, first and foremost, I've forgotten half the colours I used on this. So there's probably all going to be different colours anyway, but it's, a lot of these programmes are going to be me doing painting the same things over and over again, so I do apologise. I'll try and vary them a bit, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I may also, at some point, I'm going to have to run out of things to paint on the live stream. I'm going to have to just do non-my army stuff, like I've got the... Uh, which one have I got? I've got the... Uh, I've got the the orc rooker truck squig buggy to do at some point. <laughs> That's not part of my army. I've also got the uh, some Age of Sigmar horsey carty thing that uh, Dave and that lot, Dave and Dad and everybody got me for my birthday last year, which I've got to build at some point. And that's I don't I'm not into Sigmar, but that's going to be a not not part of my army. But that's going to be fun. Uh, I've also ordered. Uh, just just to make you aware, I recently got uh, 80 pound of vouchers from patreon because i did a survey and i had 80 quid on amazon for ages i've been like i need to buy something and i thought i'll buy a bane blade because i get a bane blade I've got 80 quid it might cost a little bit more but not much 80 quid i'll get myself a bane blade you can't get a bane blade on amazon you go and do a search for games workshop or war here's some advice if you're looking for games workshop kits warhammer kits don't search for warhammer or just do a search for Games Workshop. Literally type Games Workshop into the search engine. If you do Warhammer, you'll see about three things and an Imperial Knight. If you do Games Workshop, you'll see a lot more. There's two Bane Blades on Amazon. They're both like 300 quid each. And I'm like, what? Why are people selling a Bane Blade kit for three or 400 quid when it's like 80 quid? The only thing I can think is that they haven't got any in stock and they're just putting the price up to people. Don't. I don't know. There's, if you go and have a look on Amazon, there's two. Both of them, one of them's got the really, really old box art, and they're both like two, three hundred quid. It's like it's, it's eighty quid, dude. So I don't know why no one is selling a Bane Blade on Amazon. I don't know why. Anyway, Amazon UK, very strange. So I didn't get that. So I said to Mama Fox, I said, right, Mama Fox, I've got a choice of three things. I've got eighty quid to spend in vouchers. I've got a choice of three things I can get. 
Archeon, the ever chosen, which is really nice. Cost me a little bit more than 80 quid, but only a few quid. I can get the Lord of Change, which looks really cool, but it's, it's all right, but it's a bit boring. Or I can get the bloke on the Star Drake, which looks mint, it's like massive. And I basically left it to Mama Fox to choose. Did she want me to get Archeon the Ever Chosen? This is for me, it's not for Mama Fox. Did she want did she fancy Archeon the Ever Chosen? Did she want me to get the Lord of Change? Or did she want me to get the Star Drake? And she went for the Star Drake. The bloke on the Star Drake. It's Age of Sigma stuff, but it's just big fat dragon. I'm like, yeah. Uh, Vasily says, right, thanks for the waffles, guys and ladies. Thank you very much for coming in, Vasily. Uh, I shall see you again soon. See you next week. Thank you for coming in. So, yes, I let Mama... I couldn't decide, so... Because there's not a lot you can get for 80 quid um, on the Amazon for the for the Games Workshop stuff. I'm like, eh, I could get myself an Imperial Knight, maybe, and then sell it. But I was like, no, nah, not yet. So, in the, end, in the end, I had those three to go for. And I let Mama Fox choose, and she chose the uh, Star Drake. So, I should be getting that in the next week or so. Well, it'll be a long time before I get to painting it, but that'll be another fun thing to paint. Uh, quick last look at chat, then. Do, 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 do. Sound's been okay today, says Dan. Oh, cool. Just I keep seeing little red bits on my um, on my sound meter. I don't know if perhaps my microphone audio settings are being weird. It's very weird. Uh, Chris at Gross Model says you should be doing orcs soon. Yes, once Chris has finished his Torox Prime, he's got some mega knobs. Mega knobs. Uh, orcs are great, but the crevasse gaps between parts are a pain to fill, says Zadster. I don't know. I've not got that yet. Not got there yet. Gross model says Stargate. Why does Gross model say Stargate? Apart from Stargate is awesome. Uh, Vastly's got to go and feed the Sprogs. Right, well, I think that's going to do us. It is quarter to six. I'm dying for a wee again. It's all this tea. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I should go and have my dinner. I'll finish off this uh, dry brushing. I'm really pleased with how that came out. The thing you have to remember about the way I do stuff is that I pretty much make it up on the spot. So I, just, I hadn't planned that. I just picked the four colours I thought looked right and just dry brushed it. And it's only because I'm, 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 I know how dry brushing works well enough that I can kind of plan what it will come out like. And it kind of doesn't always, but I'm kind of pleased with the way that came out. There's a little bit of grain to the light colour, the grain of the paint, but that's fine. Once it's matte varnished, that will disappear. It'll all blend in together. So that's going to do us. So yes, thank you everyone for watching who's been watching today. Uh, Aiden Jones says, wait, there's vehicles for Age of Sigmar. There are, there are some vehicles. Uh, I, I don't mind Age of Sigmar. I wouldn't, it doesn't, as an army, I wouldn't want to build one because it's not, well, I prefer guns and tanks. But there are some beautiful models. That's why I've got the big dragon thing because that looks brilliant. I just want to get that as a model. I'll probably make it and sell it. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you to everyone who's been watching today. I really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned, as I say, next Sunday for the same again. We've got some videos coming up, hopefully, throughout the week for Warhammer Conquest. They won't go into early access. They'll just go straight to YouTube, so you can expect to be able to watch them this week. Next Friday, we've got the last episode of the U-Boat build going public. It's in early access for patrons right now. That'll go public on Friday. Uh, Saturday, I'll be doing my Sazaba Baba, baby. Sazaba Baba, Sazaba Baba, baby. Sabazazaba, Sazar, Sazabadi, big the big verka. That's going to be the stream on Saturday, and then this again next Sunday. So I shall see you over the course of the next week. But until next time, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Have a good rest of your weekend, whatever part of the weekend you're in right now. Uh, and I shall say, until next time, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome like this. Go be awesome. You there, you there, with all eye holes on your face, looking at this finger now. Oh. One last thing. Here we go. Um, I've said before in the past, random point, that I can't bend the ends of my fingers. Uh, and I can't remember what it's called. I found out the name of it. It's a, it's a, a, it's a condition called something. Something grippo something. Right? It's, it, you, the, the muscles are too weak to bend the end of your fingers. So I can't bend the end of my fingers. However, what I hadn't realised in my 48 years of life, I don't have any wrinkles on those knuckles. They're just not there. There's no wrinkles. And I hadn't realised that. And I didn't even know there was supposed to be wrinkles. I'm just like, in 48 years of life, I'd never noticed. Oh, look, there's no wrinkles on those knuckles because they don't bend them. They don't bend. So there's no... Weird, isn't it? And, and I've never noticed that before. <laughs> it would take me 48 years to figure that out and a picture on an internet site. And I went, oh, look, I've got that. Oh, no, I haven't got them either. Some people get it where they have no, ring, no movement in either knuckle. So some people have got the fingers only bend there. 
I can bend them, but it's just they don't. I can't voluntarily bend them, but I'm lucky I can bend my fingers here. But so yeah, I've got no 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 wrinkles on my knuckles there at all. How weird! I know. <laughs> Chris says weirdo. I know, but what's the most scary thing is not that, but it's taken me 48 years and I've never actually noticed that I haven't got wrinkles on my fingers that I look at every day. Well, sometimes my observation powers are amazing and sometimes they're terrible. Anyway, yes, I shall give up. So, <sighs> take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. <laughs>